for around 23 Super Saturday coming to you from the Sydney Football Stadium. I'm Matt Russell, great to have your company on another glorious Sydney day. They are great conditions for the Roosters to spring an upset or Manly to bounce back from defeat in both the Toyota Cup and the NRL. We'll see both those games a little bit later on Super Saturday but as I welcome Stuart Raper, Stuart the big news has already happened on Super Saturday and that is the departure of Brian Smith from Newcastle. Perhaps no surprises about his departure but the timing certainly caught everyone by surprise. Well it is, you know, it's a, there'll be a lot more to come out of this I'm sure over the next few days as to why the timing is so late. Only two days to prepare for the game against the Storm um, and you would have thought it would have been probably all in the week for the, the new coach to come in although he's been there with them um, you know, taking the reins as a head coach is a lot different than being an assistant coach and you would have thought they would have given him a bit more time but obviously there might be a bit more to it. Yeah, Rick Stone signed to coach the team throughout the rest of this season and for the next two years we'll talk a little bit more about that later on the pre-game show and the boys will discuss it further in the NRL pre-game show from 5pm. Well, then it's time for Monday Night Football and what a game this will be after the developments this week in Newcastle. Now, I thought that Newcastle was probably due to bounce back, but the fact that they now have a new coach, as we all know, teams tend to respond. I think that the Knights are specials given what's happened at Melbourne this week and given what's happened today at Newcastle. Well, exactly. I think it's time for them to lift. Uh, they now know their future. They now know what, who's going to be in charge at the helm for the next two and a half year, or two years. So that, that gives a bit of stability in the coaching ranks and they know who they're playing for. And, you know, I think they'll, they'll aim up, uh, especially against a Storm who probably haven't had a great week either in pre preparing for this game. No, a terrible week. Both of these teams are Monday night specialists. Trent Higgs went along to Newcastle training to see if he could see what might give Newcastle the edge. It wasn't exactly a traditional training session, but if having fun is the key to success, Newcastle's preparation for Monday night's clash with Melbourne was ideal. Oh, oh, the tone was more serious when it came to rating the Storm's chances without superstar centre Greg Inglis. The Knights have plenty of respect for their rivals who still have a team packed with proven match winners. I mean, they've got a lot of other great players, Test players, Queensland players, uh, and they've been a, a group of players who have played together for a fair while now, so they're always strong. I'm certainly not looking at it um, as, as any easier than what it would have been um, if Greg was playing, so uh, another big game and, and after three Three losses in a row from us, which has been disappointing. Um, we'd like to, to get a win this weekend or this this Monday night. Melbourne have built up a, um, a reputation over time that they're you know a very very hard team. No, no matter if they're home or away, and you know I know it's a big loss for Greg Inglis to be out for them. But um, you know, like I said, you know they're going to have good players coming in, and uh, you know they're still going to be hard to beat. Newcastle are aiming to rediscover the good form they showed earlier in the year after slipping out of the top eight with three straight losses. Good here's Inglis. The start of the year was our defence was, was really strong and um, probably the best we'd had in, in a few years, um, which, was, which was a great sort of foundation for each game. Um, it's dropped off a little bit in, the, in probably the past couple of months, so I think it's, we've, got to, we've got to be strong defensively and uh, we've probably got to offer a bit more on attack. The players have taken responsibility for the form slump and they refuse to blame it on coach Brian Smith's recent decision to leave the Knights at the end of the season to coach the Roosters. It's got nothing to do with Brian, you know, leaving or anything like that, but uh, it's, it all falls back onto the players where the players out there, you know, going out there every week and putting their bodies on the line. So, you know, we just have to be in together and, and be strong and, you know, hopefully um, they get the two points. Probably the thing is there's a distraction now is that we've lost three games since that announcement. Um, which I mean, as players, you, you need to you know, be up for, for each game each week and um, certainly me included and the rest of the boys that, that we need to um, take some ownership and, and turn things around this week. We've talked about it as the players, you know, Smithy Levin's got absolutely nothing to do with the way we've been playing. You know, we've, we've put it to bed now and we're moving on from it and um, you know, we're just going to do our best for the uh, remaining four games and hopefully we can get ourselves in the semis. Home field advantage is a bonus in the big games and Newcastle are playing three of their last four matches at Energy Australia Stadium. It's always um, great to play in front of our fans who, who give us a lot of support and I think it's, a, it's always tough for teams to come to Newcastle and play. 
Yes, obviously those interviews done before today's development with Brian Smith now leaving, but further to that, you're interested to note just how different the Knights seem to be treating training this week. It is a coach's ploy, isn't it, to mix things up when things aren't going so well? Well, you have to. You've got to look at all the varieties you do in your training. We're round 23 now, so the monotony, monotony comes in of doing repeated drills or repeated scrimmage, things like that. So look to bring a bit of variety in and probably what's happened with the Knights with a few losses and different departing coach, a bit of variety is certainly probably a bright spark of what they need and, and uh, will proof might be in the pudding tomorrow night or Monday night. And Brian Smith walks out on the Newcastle Knights. Hello, I'm Rob Canning. Welcome to Toyota Sports Tonight. We've got big news coming your way and lots of it. Major developments ahead of the NRL finals as Brian Smith is axed. Enormous decisions come with probably the situation as well and the situation is getting quite desperate. A comprehensive report coming your way. Roosters bound Brian Smith's time as coach of the Newcastle Knights is over after he moved aside today. He's been replaced by assistant Rick Stone who signed on for the top job until 2011. In what looked more like a scene from The Godfather, the Knights handed Rick Stone an offer he couldn't refuse. As of today, he'll become the first born and bred Nova Castrian to coach the club. Brian Smith, farewell players this morning, given an early leave pass 26 days after he announced he would head to the Roosters next season. Obviously that our team hasn't performed as well as we'd like them to do over the last three weeks and we were concerned that the decisions we hadn't made may be affecting the team. Enormous decisions come with probably the situation as well and the situation is getting quite desperate. Since Smith's decision to end his tenure at Newcastle a year early, the Knights have fallen to Manly 44-20, to then were upset by the Roosters 30-18, to followed by a hiding at the hands of the Eels. A total of 114 against and 46 points for. But the new boss claims at the end of the day, it's up to the players. When you run out in the field, the coach is not going to help you. You've got to be able to hold your gloves up and, and play. Stone firing the first shot at those who think he will battle to escape the shadow of his former mentor. I'm not Brian Smith. I'm not a clone of Brian Smith. I'm Rick Stone. Adam Thompson for Sports Tonight. One coach gets the chop while another one loses his head. There's more off-field turmoil in rugby league with Brian Smith forced to take an early exit as coach of the Newcastle Knights. His assistant's been left to revive the Knights' stuttering finals campaign, while Smith will take over as head coach at the Sydney Roosters from next season. An emergency board meeting last night resulted in Rick Stone becoming Newcastle coach. The new knight in shining armour already in charge at today's training session. The rest of this season, plus next year, and 2011. I'm not Brian Smith, I'm not a clone of Brian Smith. I'm Rick Stone and I'm gonna uh, probably evolve my own style. Last month, Brian Smith announced he was leaving Newcastle a year before his contract expired to take up a four-year deal coaching the Sydney Roosters. The Knights have not won a game since, slipping out of the top eight. Four weeks ago, we didn't feel that we had any rush or, or any pressure upon us and four weeks down the track, you know, circumstances changed and and, uh, and obviously that our team hasn't performed as well as we'd like them to do over the last three weeks. Before joining the Knights for almost a decade, Smith coached Parramatta. During his time, Parra lost a grand final, ironically, against Newcastle. A form slump convincing Smith it was time to leave the Eels early. You have to be honest with yourself. You can't expect other people to to be putting in 100% if you don't feel as if you can do it yourself. At the Roosters, Smith will replace Brad Fittler. Playing a game of touch football. Brian, unlikely to match Freddie's finger-licking good sense of humour. It's great to see that I've got a job for next year. Yes. Andrew McKinlay, Nine News. As we reported earlier, Brian Smith's reign at the Newcastle Knights is over. He's been replaced by assistant coach Rick Stone. It's time for sport now with Jonah Griggs and Brian Smith's no longer needed at Newcastle. No, the Knights have sacked their coach with four games to go. Rick Stone has taken over all the league next. With four games to go before the finals, the Knights have told Brian Smith to stand aside, allowing new coach Rick Stone to take charge of Newcastle today. The Knights haven't won since Smith quit the club to join the Roosters next year. 
I'm not Brian Smith. I'm not a clone of Brian Smith. I'm Rick Stone, and I'm going to uh, probably evolve my own style. Enormous decisions come with probably the situation as well, and the situation is getting quite desperate. Smith said goodbye to his players this morning. Stone is Newcastle's first homegrown coach on a two-year deal after four seasons as an assistant coach. Uh, there are some issues that we need to discuss. First up, uh, obviously Brian Smith uh, has left the Newcastle Knights. There was an extraordinary meeting up there on Friday night where the decision was made to anoint Rick Stone as the new coach for the, the remainder of this season and for the next couple of years. Now, Joey, um, you're obviously have feelings about your, your old club there and what should happen. Are you happy with the decision and is it the right one at this stage of the season? Um, I wouldn't say I'm happy about it. Um, I, I probably feel like it, it's a decision that had to be made. And look, Brian's decision to go to, to the Roosters, I think it's affected the players. We look at the last three performances that they've been well and truly beat by uh, teams which they think they should have beaten. Right. So. Can I ask you a question there then? Is that Brian Smith's fault or is it a lack of professionalism from the players well, to allow it lack, to affect them? Well, I think it's a lack of professionalism from the players, yeah. but the, the, the decision has definitely affected the players, but I don't think it's the coach's fault. No. But I think the decision to let Brian go now and for Rick Stone to come in, well, we'll see Monday night against Melbourne whether it makes a difference, but I think you only get you know, a few opportunities nowadays, especially with salary cap, mm -hmm. to make the semi-finals, and uh, you know they don't want to blow it at Newcastle, so I can see their their, their reasons for it. Yeah, look, I've got grave concerns. I think if their season was in trouble, it's, it's in major problems now. I just don't see getting rid of a coach at this stage. So it's not about disloyalty. That's rubbish talking about disloyalty. Players live in the moment or should live in the moment. The loyalty from a coach is shown by the way he treats them each day, how he protects them through mm. the season in how he goes about making them better players and, and Brian Smith has done it. Um, I was called in a, apparently in a paper this morning a Brian Smith disciple. And I'm happy to put my hand up and say I respect what he is as a coach and the structures that he has left in places. Parramatta will benefit for years to come yeah. from what he did there. Newcastle will do the same. It seems to me, in my opinion, it's actually the Roosters who will benefit most here because now he can concentrate on what he's going to do with the Roosters next year, which wouldn't have been the case for the next month, possibly two months. Yeah, mate, it's a, it's a good situation for, for us to be in, uh, for him to come in now, oversee the structures, see the players that are coming through and, and can con uh, concentrate more on his move to the Roosters, so it's more beneficial for us. Well, it is a huge game for Newcastle on Monday night. They talk on the, take on the Melbourne Storm. Uh, they've lost their last three, obviously, Newcastle. Season going down the gurgler, a chance to maybe get something back on Monday night. What about the Carmichael Hunt story, Mal? You've coached him at origin level, and uh, next thing you know, you open the paper, he's going to AFL. What were your thoughts? Were you shocked? Yeah, I was left feel I was shocked, all right. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's the times now, and that's the way the, the nature of the beast is. Um, you know, you, I think Newcastle's a, fa a fantastic example of that with, you know, Brian Smith, you know, signing mid-season to go down to the Roosters, and all of a sudden, the team starts to falter. They say, well, the, the coach is deserting them, and, uh, and I think, you know, the New Newcastle Knights made some tough decisions, probably the right decisions, in, in putting Rick Stone in there. And I think, you know, same with players. If players are not performing and, um, you know, the team's struggling and, you know, they've made decisions to go elsewhere, uh, throughout the, uh, you know, in the, the ensuing years, I think it, the clubs start making tough decisions about moving players on. So you'd think about doing that if you were in control? If I was in control, yeah, I would. You know, I think, um, you, know, it's, you know, it's a lot of disloyalty in the game at the moment. I think that, you know, if, if particularly if a player or a coach is not being productive and the, and the team has, has, has suffered because of that, I think, you know, you've got to make those tough decisions and move those, those people on and, and get on with life and plan for the future. Oh, well, that was a week ago. Uh, Brian Smith has said adios, and the Newcastle Knights have said adios to uh, Brian Smith. Rick Stone takes over as coach. The roast panel, we've got so much to get through today. We just want to rip and tear. MG is here. Hello, MG. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Evan. Uh, good after <laughs> Good start. We'll rewind the tape. TK. Good afternoon, TK everybody. Wise Big Sports Breakfast. And backing up, <laughs> this is almost like Peter Sterling unplugged. He's been all formal over there. Now he's ripped the tie off. Peter Sterling, it's an honour to have you on the roast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Very lovely to be but here, and I feel very relaxed. Catch your breath, first of all. I'll let yeah. the boys have their crack about uh, Brian Smith, first of all. Uh, MG, you called... Pretty much for Brian Ted, the moment that he announced he was going to the Roosters. Are you satisfied with uh, what's transpired? No, look, I'm, I'm disappointed for the Newcastle faithful, uh, I must say. Um, I am a big fan of uh, Brian Smith's uh, coaching. I, I like him as a bloke, but I, I just couldn't see any, any good to come out of the, uh, a decision in the middle, middle of the year when they're coming fifth. Um, 
the players that he got rid of in 2007, and he put a big broom through the place. So I was I was quite happy with that. Um, but the blokes he brought to the club with him, who come along as basically his disciples, um, I think they're the ones who really, at the moment, are, are playing like they've lost the father figure. That um, mm. they seem to have lost all their energy, all their. And I think as soon as he made the decision, I think he should have went. Um, but I, look, saying that the players have, have got to take some rap as well. Mm. The players have put their cue on the rack, so to speak. Uh, as soon as the coach made the announcement, I just. I couldn't see any, any good to come of it. TK, is it any different because mm -hmm. Brian Smith was under contract for next year and he leaves the club? Because yeah, my, my point and many people's point would be, well, you know, Carmichael Hunt, he's announced he's leaving the games. Does he have to, you know, players announce where they're going the next season all the time. You don't get rid of them on the spot. The it's only a, player I can remember being uh, dropped was Justin Hodges many years ago for, of course. for Brisbane. That he then, just sat out the moment he announced he was leaving the club. Absolutely. Then rehired again yeah, rehired. by the Brisbane Broncos and became one of the favourites for Wayne Bennett. Look, forget the words sport or games. Mm. Um, it's a business. It's an absolute business at the moment. I can't blame the Newcastle Knights. Brian Smith made a business decision. In the last three weeks, they have conceded close on 40 points per game mm. with only racking up something like eight points per game. Somehow he has lost the dressing room. Now, Brian Smith Smith made a business decision. Okay. Newcastle have made a business decision. If the assistant wasn't coming in Rick Stone, mm. I would have kept with Brian Smith. It looks like it may well be a seamless transition, let's hope so, for Rick Stone. He comes with a pretty good CV. Mm. Let's hope he can do the job. But uh, for Newcastle, I, I can't blame them. They, they've made a business decision have, after Brian made one. You have presented a strong case. Uh, here's a good one from David of Black Mountain. Uh, he says he's watching the Parramatta Knights game at the 58th minute. I don't know how he picked this up, but he says there's a Knight supporter proudly wearing his Knight's jersey, ready to go home, but before he leaves, he quickly removes his jumper <laughs> and puts it in his kit bag. <laughs> Look at that, the in the bag! <laughs> They're getting towed up. You had to be sneaky to watch that. I, again, we might have to roll that back in, folks. Uh, I'm really keeping Crab the director watch. on his toes. Watch the Blake, because it is a little bit out of focus. Okay. He's wearing a Knight's jumper behind Steve Simpson's head. They're getting towed up by 30, oh. and he rips oh, the jumper off to go home. You should be ashamed of yourself, sir. What about that, eh? Put your jersey back mm, on. Caught on film by Come David on. of Black Mountain. That was the crucial thing. That was the straw that broke the camel's yep. back as far as the yep. board and Brian Smith. When yep. they saw that supporter actually do that, yep. realising you were going to release mm. that on the program. On the Sunday, right? That's perfect for the Sunday. That was race. it for People Brian. It's the Knights and the Storm on Monday Night Football. Welcome to the pre-game show on Bundy Rum's Monday Night Footy tonight. Two teams that have had their share of off-field distractions in the lead-up. The Knights are playing for new coach Rick Stone, a long-time assistant at the Newcastle club. Three straight losses have seen their finals hopes plummet. Now, the Melbourne Storm know a win will lock up a place in the top four. They'll have to do it, of course, without Greg Inglis, whose rugby league career remains in limbo. The Storm, they have a pretty impressive record against the Knights. They've won six of their last seven. Their only loss was in Newcastle around this time last season when the Knights pulled off a 17-16 thriller getting home by one point. I'm sure it'll be a little bit of the same tonight. It's going to be a terrific game of Monday Night Football. G'day everyone, Ryan Phelan with you again for the Bundy pre-game show on the panel tonight. Gary Belcher, who's off the bench for Big Gordy, Gary Freeman and also Wayne Pearce. Uh, now Badge, the brief for you tonight is put as much crap on Wiz as you possibly can. I've seen the you. show and I know that's my role. I'm not <laughs> sure I can uh, fill in for Gordon. First thing I'm doing is trying to be a lot bigger because he's a big man coming off the bench for one of the biggest forwards ever to play the game. But I'll got do my best. Got a crook back too. Crook back, yeah. He reckons it's from carrying Wiz around. Wiz, do you week. want us to send a message to your good mate? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? You got nothing I'm already? He I'm told me actually, you'd be giving it to mate, me. Mate, I night. am so happy you're here, Bad, because Gordon's got nothing. He's coaching's going terrible. <laughs> South are going. They're out of the eight. Oh, they're finished. Oh. And Gordon has been there helping them out. Done a magnificent job, and he's been here. But see, last week I gave it to him good, and he couldn't back up. We can't back up the big man. No, no contact quarter tonight, is that right? Well, that's what happened to him last week. <laughs> oh, he, 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 he got injured. <laughs> He's holding that ball out one hand and, and he got the injury. I said, oh, I'm going to come down next week. Oh, Big Gordy, we will, uh, we will miss you tonight. No, but it's, it's great to have you on, uh, Badge. And let me ask you tonight about this game, Newcastle-Melbourne. Obviously, a lot of dramas with both teams uh, in the past week. Rick Stone, what is he going to bring to this side tonight? There's that old saying that 
players fire up for a new coach. Do you think that'll be the case for the Knights this evening? Well, look, I don't know exactly what he's going to bring, but he's a change. And that team needs a change. For some reason, they've denied it. They've said it had nothing to do with the fact Brian Smith has uh, announced he was leaving next year, that they had a massive form slump in the last three weeks. But it is. For some reason, I don't know if they spat their dummies, their heads were down, something was wrong. And they haven't been real professional about it, the players themselves. Yeah, sure, their coach is leaving, but move on. Now, Rick Stone, he's going to be a change, he's a bit of a fresh face. Maybe they want to play for next year's coach. I'd expect the Knights to put in a much better performance tonight. Wiz, has this been handled the right way? The Newcastle Knights board standing down Smith at the weekend? Well, I'm not really 100% sure because I think Brian's been to a number of clubs and he hasn't finished one contract out. So I think after last week's game and the performance and the way the players played, I think the board decided, well, they're going to make a change and give Rick Stone an opportunity. Uh, well, I think it's great for him and, and giving the, the coach an opportunity like this, but how tough is it going to be in tonight's game against the Storm, number one, and also just sitting outside the eight? You know, if he loses tonight, their season's probably nearly over. Junior, as a master coach, what sort of brief should Rick Stone be giving his troops tonight ahead of this game? Well, they're, they're playing for their season, but I don't think he needs to put more any more pressure on them. Uh, their players would know that. I think he needs to, to get them to play with, with it, within themselves. I think they've been play, trying to play uh, and make too many mistakes by, by playing uh, a game that is, is foreign to them. The, the, the game that they overachieved for the best part of the, of the season, yeah. they were overachievers, and they were playing a game that was based on a, a relentless go forward. Their, their, their forwards were, were aggressive, and uh, they actually had a lot of structure and worked well out on the fringe, particularly to their right side, and I think that's where, the, where they're going to be. But does he want to put on. his stamp on this game? Does he want to put his brand on this game, or does he ease can't. into it? No, he can't, you're going to come game. in with an overhaul the way that the, no. the, the team's going to play in basically a couple of training sessions. So he's going to be, I, I would think, more mentally than anything else, and that's where the issue's been. Yeah. It's been their mental approach rather than than uh, any physical structure, because the structure's there. This team, this team has got what it takes. They were playing some wonderful footy at the start of the yeah. year, and you tipped on how they were, how they were playing, Junior. But mm. their go forward w was great, and they had something to build on, and, and a really good kicking game as well. That's been missing. They just mm. haven't really got into any rhythm in the last few weeks, and they've dropped their heads pretty quickly. Yeah, good, Gadget. <laughs> Once Brian announced he was leaving, and it came out in the media, they went backwards and they didn't know how to handle the pressure. I think the players actually probably thought to themselves, well, if you're leaving, why should we have a go? They didn't show any great fighting games when, well, when they needed to, did they? I, I they think they struggling. came up against a couple of sides that were really in hot on form too. And, you know, they had that good game against Manly where they started off with a 12 points, uh, uh, four, four down, yeah. you know. And then they, they just went backwards. I, well, the, I don't know. the good thing is that they can say to themselves, honestly, if we deserve to play finals, we should be beating a team yeah, well, like the, the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, tonight. they need to win tonight, but I... I Honestly, mate, I know we'll do our tips a little bit later on, but I think they'll struggle. And the biggest time. disappointment, I believe, is, has been their form at home. Uh, you know, a couple of their performances at home have been diabolical. Normally, that's been a bit of a fortress, mm. and it was early in the season a real fortress. That's fallen away. They're back at home tonight. Can they lift? That's the big question. All right, let's check in with Andy Raymond now, our sideline eye this evening, uh, who has all the team news in Newcastle. Uh, Andy, look, a range of off-field issues leading into tonight's game. It'll be interesting to see which team settles first. G'day. Hey, g'day Ryan, g'day everyone. Now over the course of 2009 we've heard all of our experts talk about different theories, what's been good and, and what hasn't been that good over the course of 2009. Um, tonight that's all forgotten. Uh, it's not about tactics, it's not about plans or, or counter plans, it's about attitude. These are two footy clubs that have had a, a terrible week. They've, they've had negative headlines and tonight it's about who turns up with the best attitude. Full stop, you can throw your tactics and the whole lot away. The pressure is on internally and externally to these two footy clubs. Let's check out how they'll take the field here tonight on Bundy Rum Monday Night Football. And for the Newcastle Knights, there are a, a couple of positional changes. The back line remains unchanged. Gidley, Lalia, Sal, McDougall and Avuna, Rogers and Mullen are the halves. For the forward pack, Mark Defua and Isaac de Goyes are joined by Richie Fayoso up front. Steve Simpson is out, so into the second row comes Corey Patterson alongside Zeb Taya and Matt Hilda. The bench is Naguama, Caruana, 
Chris Houston and also Sione Tovo in 21. Young Sione on debut here tonight and the coach for the first time is Rick Stone. For the Melbourne Storm, Billy Slater, Steve Turner, Will Chambers, Dane Nielsen, they remain unchanged but Joseph Tomain is out. In jersey number 19, straight on to the wing comes Brett Anderson. The remainder of the starting side is unchanged. The bench though, the one, Jeff Lima returns to footy in jersey number 18, out as Ryan Tandy, the coaches Craig Bellamy, who I caught up with alongside uh, Rick Stone a short time ago. Rick, congratulations on your appointment. Only a few days into the job. Can we expect anything different from Newcastle tonight? I'd like to think we'll get some sort of response, Andy, that's for sure. Um, obviously, the board's taken a big decision here to change the coach with a couple of games to go, and a response in the positive vein would be exactly what we're looking for, that's for sure. Fair test to begin with. Three straight losses in the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, no doubt about it. The Storm being the benchmark in the last couple of years and pretty consistent in most of their footy in all facets of their game. So, um, look, looking forward to it. We've had some good battles with the Storm in the last few years and um, really took, took the challenge to them last time we played them down in Melbourne in round 17 and um, like to think we can do it again. Normally, coaches uh, can get a pretty good indication of, uh, of a playing group pre-game. Are they up? Yeah, I like to think so. I think we've been spirited in the last couple of days. So I've had the last two sessions, Saturday and Sunday, with them, and um, spirits are really high. Looks like energy's up, which is, which is great, and um, we probably need to match that energy with some execution here, which has let us down the last few weeks. Good luck in your first outing. Thanks very much. Rick Stone and Craig Bellamy there. Of course, this is Close the Gap Round, and this is the jersey the Newcastle Knights will wear tonight. An Indigenous design on the cold and allied jersey. This is, in fact, Richie Fayo says he's getting a little cold at the moment. I'd go and drop it back. Now, this is the 23rd meeting between these two clubs. Of the 22 so far, it is 11 each. I dare say no other side in the comp has got such a good record against the Melbourne Storm, who have been pretty much all conquering over the course of the last couple of years. It is the Newcastle Knights playing host to the Melbourne Storm right here, live and exclusive on Fox Sports. And kickoff is just a tick after 7 o'clock. Kickoff is less than half an hour away for tonight's game between the Knights and the Storm at Energy Australia Stadium. Let's get out to the boys. Warren Smith, Laurie Daly and Greg Alexander are standing by. G'day, Was. Look, the stakes are pretty high tonight for uh, new coach Rick Stone. Do you think he can deliver the goods? Well, we'll find out, of course, at the end of uh, full time, Ryan. But if you're an amateur sports psychologist or even a professional sports psychologist like our very own Wayne Pierce, this is a dream scenario tonight. Uh, of course, a story about a team that was flying high in the middle of the season. Their coach announces he's going at the end of the season. Suddenly, their form falls off the face of the map. They change the coach. And Laurie Daly, I wouldn't be surprised tonight. And it coincides with a massive form reversal from the Newcastle Knights. Well, I think that's what the crowd's expecting tonight. They're playing in front of their home fans. They've been disappointed with the way they've played over the last three weeks. Defensively, they've been off the pace. They've been averaging something like 35 points per game against them in that period of time. So that's an area that they can improve. But Dick Stone just wants a better performance in attitude tonight. It's all about attitude and it's all about competing. He believes that they can do that tonight. They can certainly uh, test this Melbourne Storm side. Well, Brandy, last time we were here for a Monday night football game, it was the Newcastle Knights versus the Rabbitohs, and Jared Mullen absolutely carved the bunnies up. If they do find form tonight, it wouldn't be a surprise that he again is one of the stars. Yeah, look, if, if the Knights are going to do anything in this season and, and win here tonight against the Melbourne Storm, you think most of it would revolve around Jared Mullen. Uh, but he does need a platform to work on the back of. Uh, Jared Mullen hasn't had that in previous weeks. Uh, if the Newcastle team do compete, we know that Jared Mullen can tear any defensive uh, line up apart. He's got an array of skills. We've seen them all season. There's the long pass. I think he's got the best left to right pass in the competition. He's got a great short kicking game, a very good long kicking game as well. Uh, he works good with Kurt Gidley. Uh, and look, if they, if they concentrate on his runners, Jared Mullen has the speed and the step to tear them apart. So he will, he'll be integral uh, if they're to win tonight and go on to play semi-final football at the end of the year. There he, of course, is in the Indigenous design jumper. 
Uh, we'll wait and see how if that brings him a bit of luck here tonight against the Melbourne Storm. Seven tries, 15 try assists, and 10 line breaks. But of course, they will need their forward pack to do what they can do, as they were doing in the middle part of the season for the likes of Jared Mullen and Ben Rogers to play their game. Look, it's no secret that any team that has success in this competition, it all revolves around their forwards moving forward. And Newcastle were doing that as well as anyone throughout this season. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case over the last month. They've got some terrific back rowers who really terrorise the smaller defenders on the edges. They've got good go forward in the middle. So have the Melbourne Storm. That's where the battle will be tonight. And whichever forward pack comes out on top will be the winner of this game. Let's, uh, let's go out to the guys at the ground firstly before we get our tips and see what they fancy tonight. And guys, really, it is flip of the coin. It's been that way in the betting for most of the week. Was who do you fancy tonight? Yeah, it certainly is that way now as far as uh, the betting is probably concerned. As far as which way you're going to lean with this tip, it certainly is a bit uh, each way because Steve Simpson for mine is a massive loss for Newcastle. I'm going to go with the Newcastle Knights, so I just think the old coach getting the flick will change things and they'll be OK. They'll get the job done. Here. We'll see the real Newcastle Knights stand up, Loss. Well, that's what we're anticipating, the real Newcastle Knights, the team that plays to the edges a lot through their back rowers. Jared Mullen really testing uh, this Melbourne Storm side with his long passing game. And I think Kurt Gidley's been a little bit quiet since State of Origin. I think Kurt Gidley could be the man to lead the Newcastle Knights to victory tonight. Yeah, look, I almost changed after Steve Simpson withdrew uh, earlier today, but... Uh, I'm going to stick with the Newcastle Knights too. I, I don't think Melbourne's away form has been great. In fact, they've only won one from their last five. So uh, Newcastle and a hard one to pick. Thanks, guys. Good calling tonight. Should be a terrific game. Let's now go down to our sideline eye, Andy Raymond. Andy, what are you feeling tonight uh, for the final game of the Close the Gap round? It's hard to go past the new coach team winning theory, but I am due to the fact Melbourne have had a nine-day turnaround and also a three-day rest. So... Without a confidence, but put me down for the storm. All right, Andy, uh, good crowd building there in Newcastle, so it should be a, a terrific atmosphere tonight. Uh, Junior, let's start with you. Who are you tipping? Well, Steve Simpson out, big loss. Jeff Lima in for Melbourne, I think it's a big plus with his go forward, so I'm leaning towards the Melbourne Storm. Wiz. I'm going with the Melbourne Storm, but I do like that Rick Stone's coming to the side and, as coach and made some changes. I think Corey Patterson starting the game is going to be very, very beneficial for the Newcastle side because he is a very good player, but storm for me. Now, Badger, I hope you're tipping on your own. I hope you haven't got on the phone to Gordy. I did, I did talk to Gordy. He did tell me you'd sit on the fence. You'd tip one team, but you'd say the other team would go all right. So he Gary, was right it's about not even that. funny. Well, no, he told me that. <laughs> See, I, I think it is. Say yeah. storm and then you said, Riz Storm. You told us how wonderful the Knights were going to play. No, I didn't say that. I Just said in case they play. Good play. change that Rick Stone. <laughs> anyway, roll his. his you're right, storm. Gordy. No, he's on the fence. And you and I are going to take the Melbourne Storm tonight because uh, well, we, because we think they're going to win. All right, well, I'm going to go the Newcastle Knights. If they want to play finals football, this is a must-win game for them this evening. Let's have a look at the TAB sports bet prices. And as I mentioned earlier, it's been flip of the coin for most of the week, but the late support has come for the Melbourne Storm today. They've firmed into a dollar seventy-nine from one dollar and ninety cents. Wiz, what's the option for you? I'm going straight on the Storm at a dollar seventy-five. I'm giving Newcastle no chance tonight, so I'm getting straight on them. And let's have a look at first try scorers. The best back has been Billy Slater. First try scorers, guys. Billy Slater for me. Oh. Dallas Johnson. <laughs> Dallas Johnson to avoid the nudie run. I reckon I'll get off to a good start, <laughs> uh, the Knights, and I'm going to take Cooper Verner. OK, I'll go Adam McDougall. That's us done and dusted for another pre-game show. Don't forget, we've got all of our features in the post-game show a little bit later and a terrific Monday night retro tonight, which features the North Sydney Bears. We're turning back the clock and also the Balmain Tigers with a couple of our best in the studio featuring in that one. But now it's time to cross to Energy Australia Stadium for kickoff in the clash between the Knights and the Storm and was well. If history's any guide, the Knights might just pip the boys from Melbourne after their thriller in Newcastle late last season. They had a good one up here. They had a good one down in Melbourne not that long ago also. It was the Melbourne Storm who got the points on that occasion. We'll wait and see if the home side can reverse the fortunes tonight with a new coach and perhaps a new attitude as well. Newcastle Knights, if they win tonight, they will go above Melbourne for fourth place on the competition. Table. You mentioned Brian Smith and the Newcastle Knights' ability to beat the sides above them on the ladder. He's got a great knack of getting his team ready for these big games. What a different tale we were telling the last time these two met. Since then, the Knights have lost their coach, lost their way, and are in danger of falling off the map. And 
to really rub it in. The storm lineup is the yardstick for where the Knights could be sitting. And they go down in a thriller. Their white hot band of talent has seen them maintain a top four spot, regardless of injury, origin, or controversy. They won a hard fought battle in round 17. Will lightning strike twice tonight? Yes, it feels as though the night season has got a second chance and they begin tonight, of course, to try and get things back underway in this run to the finals in what is the final game of this Close the Gap round in round 23, the first game, as it turns out, in the coaching career of the NRL's newest coach, Rick Stone, replacing Brian Smith after a tumultuous Friday night and Saturday morning in this part of the world. They have a new coach. We'll wait and find out if they do have a new attitude. They'll need a good attitude, though, against a team who always brings plenty of it to the game. And the Melbourne Storm, of course, three times grand finalists, the 2007 Premiers. Well, they're missing a few players, of course, most notably Greg Inglis, but they will be fired up for this one here tonight. Yeah, they certainly will be. Greg Inglis uh, replaced by Dane Nielsen. Brett Anderson also comes into the side. He replaces Joe Tomain. Uh, the other new player into the squad is Jeff Lima. Their front row, Anderson, Smith, White, and in the back row, Cross, Hoffman and Johnson, and their coach, Craig Bellamy. It has been a tough week, of course, for the Melbourne Storm camp. The Newcastle Knights, you could say likewise, and a couple of late replacements don't help their cause tonight with both Steve Simpson and Danny Wicks out of this team to take on the Melbourne Storm this evening. There's their lineup, of course, with Corey Patterson coming into the starting 13. Well, they need a huge form reversal, the Newcastle Knights, and this is the way they line up tonight. Kurt Gidley at the back, Lalia and Vuna on the wings. The centres, Sal and McDonald, the halves. Rogers and Mullen up front, Tafua, Degoys, and Richie Fioso comes off the interchange bench. Corey Patterson gets an opportunity to start tonight, along with Zeb Taya and Matt Hilder in the back row. And the interchange bench, Houston, Naguama, Caruana and Tovo. And Rick Stone coaching his first ever game in the NRL. I think he'd be just as excited as the players. Had a three-game playing career with the South Sydney Rabbitohs back in the late 80s, early 90s. Rick Stone, of course, he will coach this team for the rest of 2009 and through 2010, 2011. You can see the jumpers the Newcastle Knights are wearing, of course, designed by Les Elvin, the NADOC Artist of the Year. And the, it is the Close the Gap round as well. The NRL have done a great job, of course, bringing awareness to the fact there is a big gap in life expectancy between Aboriginals and non-Aboriginals and also Torres Strait Islanders. And the Newcastle Knights doing their bit for the Close the Gap round against the Melbourne Storm here tonight. Cameron Smith, one final word. They always bring their best game to the table. Rarely do they put in a below-par performance. And they had to sneak home in a last-minute try in the corresponding game down in Melbourne in round 17. That was an absolute thriller, and it wouldn't surprise if this one is decided in the last couple of minutes here tonight as well. Now they've had some great battles over the years, and that was a beauty down at Olympic Park. The, Melbourne, uh, the Newcastle Knights in great form uh, during that period. Let's see if they can resurrect their season after a pretty dismal uh, last three weeks. The Knights are back in the hunt for semi-final football this year. And that they are, the siren will sound as Houston takes it away, no mistakes from dummy half. And they've broken the streak. They are back in the hunt, these Newcastle Knights. Back in the top eight as well. They will move up into seventh position from 11th to 7th with a 26 to 14 victory over the Storm here tonight. And it was a great first half performance that set the win up 18-0 at half time to the Newcastle team. Plenty of speculation about whether they could turn their season around. The new coach in charge, Rick Stone. 
was a it was a, an all or nothing game for them. They walk away from here in front of their home crowd with another loss. Well, their season was over, but they've risen to the challenge. Melbourne haven't been great away from home this year. That's now one win from their last six trips away from Olympic Park. They'll be back there next week, but and there are only four wins from 11 games on the road now in 2009 as well. That record certainly hurting them in their bid to be in the top two this season. Let's go downstairs right now to Andy Raymond. Yeah, very happy Newcastle Knights from 11th to 7th, Chris Houston. Yeah, mate, we knew it was an important game for us. A um, bit, of, bit of drama during the week, but we were more concentrating on just getting back in that top eight, and we were lucky enough to do it tonight. The stat of a new coach and a side winning, amazing. What is it? Mate, it's, it's not really got a lot to do with the coach, to tell you the truth. We were below par as players. We made a pact that we had to turn it around, otherwise our season was on the line, and we put in a decent performance tonight. Decent. It was brilliant up until about 65 minutes, but then concerns. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we had a good start. Good season start the second half, scored an early try. But um, some errors crept into our game, and um, they got back in there, but we held them out. Well done, big fella. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, for. Also nice enough to join us, the Mad Dog. Always good to talk to you after a win, and an important one it was. Yeah, great win for us, mate, and uh, getting our season back on track with a game like that's uh, really good for confidence. You've been around long enough. You've seen enough coaches. Were you switched on for the coach pre-game tonight? Oh, definitely. You know, obviously, uh, first game for Stoney, it was... Uh, Big motivation for us to get a win for him. He's a great fellow and uh, he should do a great job for the club in the future. OK, attitude was different tonight. There was, there was energy, there was enthusiasm. What was different from a football aspect? Oh, we just played a lot more direct tonight. We've been playing a little bit too lateral and trying to get uh, the centres the ball early. And tonight we decided to uh, go forward early and uh, be a bit more patient and get them on the edges after we went forward. And it worked uh, early in the first half. Semi-finals back in the hunt. Yeah, definitely this competition so tight that uh, we're only one loss away from being out of the semis and one win from being in there. So, uh, great win and a good night for the boys. Well done, Doggy. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Adam McDougall, he was very good, wasn't he, in that first half when they ran out to a big lead, 18 points to nil at half time. They went on with the job despite a couple of scares in the run to full time. We will take a break on Bundy Rum Monday Night Football. We'll stick around the full one hour post game show coming up right after this live on Fox Sports. Now it's time to hear from the coach that has the best strike rate in the competition, 100%, Coach Rick Stone, and he's with Captain Kurt Gidley. Rick, for 65 minutes, that's exactly what you were looking for for your first game as coach? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we talked a little bit about the energy and the passion in the footy team, how that's been missing a little bit in the last few weeks, and uh, we displayed plenty of it. Obviously, we got a bit tired and we didn't have much football in the in the last you know 15 minutes but um, yeah exactly what the doctor ordered for the Knights. Some nervous moments in that last 15 minutes? Yeah there was um, you know but actually we, we searched again a little bit probably in the last five or seven minutes I thought and I, I thought we were defending well enough to hold the storm that's for sure. Often there's a bounce back factor with a coach anyway, but what's your theory? Why, why did the Knights turn it around at all? I, I, I suppose the response of the board asks the players to have a good look at themselves personally and their individual performance and probably their pride in their own performance. Um, we definitely all did that. Uh, we didn't have we didn't have a lot of time to prepare, but it was an attitude thing, and we showed we showed that we got some of that attitude back in the last couple of days, and definitely out there tonight. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, our defence um, has been, you know, pretty disappointing the last month, and I think uh, the last time we played the Storm, actually, it was it was a pretty close game, and, and our defence was was some of the best of the year and that's what we want them to do again this week and, and get back to that for, for the rest of the year and, and your defence is, is all about attitude. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was outstanding for, for 65 minutes. Um, they come back um, and had a shot at us but I thought we'd done pretty well. 
Do you think you guys are going to play that well regardless of the change of coach? Or do you think that had an impact oh, on I don't know if I want to answer sort of questions like that. I'm happy to talk about tonight's game, but I don't want to sort of go dwell on too much of the, the coach sort of thing and what's going on. Um, I'll talk about our future and what's going to, what's going to take you know, for the rest of the year for us to do well, but um, we're all pretty happy about tonight. Rick, uh, is that like, you've been saying for a month you need something to boost confidence, is that... Is that what you tonight? Yeah, for sure, sure. I mean, that's that's exactly what Stoney asked of us. Um, the last two training sessions uh, have been a lot better. Um, we've, we've all been down, a little bit down the past month, and um, that shows, that's been shown with our performance. And, and Stoney's asked for that 5 or 10% more in, 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 in enthusiasm. And I thought we, we showed that right from the start tonight. Rick, uh, Jared Mullins game tonight. Um, did you want specifically a big effort from him, this halfback? Did you want more effort from him? Yeah, obviously. We're always looking for plenty from your halfback, but I think the way our team attacked today, you know, they had they were positive with the football and we probably took Storm out of their comfort zone a little bit, which we've probably tried to do the last couple of times we've played them. I think, yeah, I was really happy with the way Mullo played, but I think collectively our team and the way we attacked and um, the way we asked some continuous questions to the Storm, I, I was happy with. Good ball area, you seem to go your right, attacking their left and, and young Dane Nielsen, and, and did so with some success. Yeah, we, we had Kurt, you know, drift across the field a little bit and ask some questions there. We, we, th we thought there were some opportunities there for us, and as it worked out, you know, we, we asked some questions, like I said, and we scored a couple of tries, and uh, we just fed off each other. That one that Matty Hilda scored, I think, there was last tackle, there's a few offloads, but there was enough people to turn up. Um, when the time counted to score a try. So that was probably you know, one of the tips that we talked about during the week and one of those you know, enthusiastic things that they get you a try in the end if you're in the right place. Rick, do you have any thoughts on what effect, if any, the Storm's own distractions might have had on them? Or did you have any thoughts on that before the game? No, we didn't talk about the Storm before the game and their distractions. We, we just concentrated on what we had to do. What about ma maintaining the momentum, Rick? That's obviously the, the key now to I mean, you've had the one win out of the slump. How, how do you maintain the momentum? Yeah, obviously that's 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 a trick. It's a short turnaround. It's against another quality team, which is the Cowboys, and um, at least it's at home, which is a good thing. I think our injuries weren't too bad out of tonight. Um, we'll have a light week and and prepare, not not physically, but hopefully we'll pl prepare the right way for the Cowboys and um, make sure the boys are fresh as possible on um, on Saturday night. What's the mood in your dressing room like? Right now. Yeah, I'm looking great after after a performance like that. Um, I thought our forwards were outstanding. Um, their defence, you know, also our outside backs. But I thought our outside backs um, took some ownership on on uh, the way we bring the ball back for for plays one and two. And I think that um, that makes a big difference to the team. I thought jun Junior, I thought all our outside backs, Keith, Dugs, um, Cooper, were all were all great. How were you when you were excited or nervous? So how did you describe your emotion? <clears throat> I think I was pretty calm. I was excited, that's for sure. You know, I was looking forward to the game. There was a good feel at our last couple of training sessions. We had a, a good dinner with um, four of our 97 legends from, from the Knights. Um, and, you know, there was a good feel about the place. The dress room had a, had a nice atmosphere about it. It was relaxed, but there was that edge that you always like to see in, in big games. And, you know, it all, all pointed towards a quality, um, enthusiastic performance. And, you know, that, that's what we got. And we're really, really happy. The boys responded and obviously it's back to work and it's on again on Saturday for us, that's for sure. Eight situations from fifth to twelfth or whatever is a minefield, you know, with results having a massive impact on teams going up and down. Are you watching the other games and keeping an eye on the other results or trying to ignore them? Um, oh, I guess I'm aware about where we are in the, in the competition and, and how, how close the, the, all those teams are. Um, we've had a, a good opportunity the last few weeks to, to put us up there, but we haven't done it. So tonight's a good, good start for this, um, this, uh, this back few games. What? Yeah, small ankle impingement. Obviously, come off the field. We use Wes uh, on his wing. Um, obviously, you know, with a short turnaround, he's going to be in some question for this week. But we'll, we'll know more and see if we get some scans tomorrow.
That uh, gives us a bit of an insight into Rick Stone, doesn't it? His personality, his demeanour seems like a lovely guy and seems to obviously get a lot out of this football team and badge under such circumstances. He's done a terrific job. Seems like a lovely guy. The NRL coaching job, that'll fix that in a few <laughs> short years, no doubt. A bit of a tough gig. He's, get, he's got himself great in pretty quick, but he's already great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, as he said, he got, he got the players to have a good look at themselves. Eh? And, and uh, that was the wake-up call that some of them needed, the fact that... Brian Smith got um, got asked to leave, and, and Rick Stone slotted it was in. And to see Kurt Gidley's reaction when asked about the coaching. He seemed reluctant. Obviously, he had a good relationship with Coach Smith, and, and is reluctant to comment. Well, on good that. on him. I mean, he didn't want to go there. He wants to to move on, and I think he handled that question really, really well. That shows some maturity for a young guy who's who's taken on the leadership of his club. He said, I want to talk about the club now and the future and we don't need to go there and start speculating What it shows is experience, because some players get railroaded in answering questions sure. that they don't really want to talk about. Um, but getting back to, to Rick Stone, the coach, I think what we saw there was, was a genuine, genuine uh, fresh approach to explaining a game. Uh, he seemed a bit nervous, which is understandable. But you know, I thought it was a real insight in the fact that he's very personable and obviously very likeable by the players. But I think... It, Getting back to Craig Bellamy also, I think the thing that I like about Craig Bellamy, he's always genuine, uh, honest and, and sincere in what he says in, in the post-match press conference. And I think we get an insight into his thinking every week. He doesn't uh, try and put, put up any sort of front. He's candid, says it as it is. That's how he is with his players. Yeah. Exactly. They know where they stand. Exactly. It's funny you say, because Kirk Gidley came on the show on the Wednesday night, and the one thing he said about Rick Stone, he's direct. He just tells it as it is. He doesn't mix it up. He just goes, bang, this is what you're doing wrong. Yeah. This is how you need to fix it. And this is what I want out of you as a football player. It's a different bag for him, though, this week, Wiz, because he's got a very important game against Cowboys. the Cowboys. A short turnaround, as he mentioned. And there's not, I guess, the uh, the statistic of first games for new coaches and, and the side seems to win. So it's all about him this week. It's not about him patching things up. It's all about Rick Stone and what stamp he puts on this football side. So we'll really see what this team is made of and what stamp he's going to put on them. Well, I think you summed it up when Chris Halston was interviewed after the game. He said all the players got together and said, look, we're not, we haven't been having a go. We've got to put our hands up and say, let's do this. And even Kirk Kidley said the same thing. And it's interesting to know that during the week they had the 97 team there, four members of the, the grand final team that would have spoken to them and said about the commitment and what the club meant to them and how they were playing, how it reflected on them as an individual that had been at the club before. So all those little things will be a slow momentum and a slow build-up for them. And against the Cowboys, they're going to have to be as good or even a 10% better to beat the Cowboys, I believe. I don't agree that it's all about Rick Stone, it's going to be all about Rick Stone. It's I think team. the whole point, it's, it's about the players. You know, 90% of the game is between the ears and the Newcastle players didn't have that for the last three weeks. Yeah. For the coach, what he has to do is try to replicate their attitude. That's the toughest thing for a, a coach to do. Sure, you can work on all the skills and the plays you want to come up with, but getting your team to turn up ready to play and, and carry out the game plan you want them to carry out with that yes, great okay. energy and enthusiasm, I, I, I know. that's what you need. I, I don't know if the game plan comes into it. Look, you play, and Gordon say, will say every week, he said, I've never had anyone come and say that game plan work for us. Yeah, but where the game plan but comes in, if, if you've got two that. lots of teams that are, that are fully peaked, mentally tuned up, then the game plan's do, doing... And, and I understand what you're saying. But the, the two things about performance are skill and will. Okay, the Absolutely. skill is having the ability, but the will... Is, is having the desire, the passion, the motivation. Now, a coach can't motivate a player. He can create an environment That's where correct. the players are, are, can tap into that inner drive, that inner, inner passion, but the coach uh, shouldn't have to and, and, and doesn't, doesn't necessarily every week have to pump a player up. No. But he's also he inherited play. a football side that at the moment is in the top eight and on the verge of making finals. If the Knights don't make the finals, does Stone take some of the blame? No, nah, no. Nah, mate, mate, the, the damage was done three weeks ago, I believe. And he's turned it around in a week. And, and, and look, listening to him, and I agree with you, Junior, he's straight down the line. He, he'll tell the players exactly how it lays. The, the, land of the, the, the land lives this way, this is what I want you to do. And I go back to him bringing those members in from that team. That's the start of it. He knows how important the old boys system in Newcastle is. And that gave those players that motivation into this week's game. Next week, he's got to come up with a difference. He's already said, light week, we'll build up mentally and get ready for the Cowboys. Another hard game. Right. And, the, and the thing about coaching, which you've coached, Badge, you've coached, I mean, it, it, there's no formula. Uh, there's no formula for coaching at any level, especially the NRL. It's a, it's a gut feel, it's about what you should do on any given day, but it's about 
in a short turnaround about what Rick Stone believes is going to be best to get the players in the right frame of mind to go on the field against Manly this week. What was significant for me was he said we're going to try to take the Storm out of their comfort zone. Yeah, so they didn't play the Storm to their strength straight up the middle of the park. They shifted away the from those edges a little bit earlier. They're still going forward but not so direct that the Melbourne Storm were going to swallow them up like they do with yeah. a lot of teams. So Certainly, They had a game plan and they did what the coach asked. Yeah. And, and, I, and I doubt it's going to change too much when they play the Cowboys because essentially they go with that sort of passion and that, that forward commitment uh, the Cowboys yep. are going to be on the back foot as well. A lot to like for Knights fans in moving forward for sure and certain. Time for our final break this evening. Don't go away. Monday night retro and also the Nokia N97 soapbox with your emails about the Parramatta Eels. That's coming up on Bundy Rums Monday Night Football. Stay with us. New Knights coach Rick Stone's a bit chirpier. Newcastle downing Melbourne 26-14 last night, just days after Stone replaced Brian Smith. We didn't have a lot of time to prepare, but it was an attitude thing, and we showed we showed that we got some of that attitude back. Adam Hawes, 10 News. Okay, on to a sacking, but not of the scrotal variety. No, the, uh, the Brian Smith variety. The uh, <laughs> Knights uh, of Newcastle came good again this week after they finally did the bleeding obvious and got rid of the coach. After three straight losses as they chased the eighth, uh, Brian Smith was stood down weeks after he announced he was joining the Roosters next year. Up stepped the new coach, uh, Rick Stone. The players responded by knocking over the Melbourne Storm. Oh, I love that bloody name, Rick Stone. It sounds like Rick Stone sounds like, you know, the hero in a, in a, in a, in a sort of detective novel. Yeah, from California. Rick Stone. Yeah, he's yeah. like a With private. The shades and the, the other night, yeah. I, think, I thought it sounded like a porn star name, <laughs> Rick Stone. Don't you reckon? Really? Come That's, on. It does. It's got that no. feel to it, Rick Stone. I, I've got to say, of, of all the you know unattractive things about rugby leagues. Yeah gone through this year. This is one that really annoys, I reckon, just the pain in front of this club contracts, blokes deserting clubs midway through seasons. Gee, I reckon it makes it look like a shallow It does, sport. it's ordinary. It's just, it, it's a real stench to it, People isn't it? People have just had enough of it. And they have. And, and look, in this case, Newcastle got, I don't want to say they got what they deserved, but they didn't alter the script much. You know, we didn't venture too far. Brian Smith had broken contracts at a lot of other clubs he'd been at. He is a professional coach from that point of view. He, I wrote a story before this that Brian Smith will, will, could possibly give Newcastle success when he takes the job there, yep. but he will change the culture of the club forever. And that's exactly what's happened. He came in, he, he sacked players, he got rid of Kirk Reynolds and he got rid of you know, Josh Perry, got rid of all these blokes who were bread and butter, yeah. Newcastle blokes. And, and copped a lot of flack for it too. Newton and fellas like that and copped the flack for it. But he said, I'm doing this about making the club yep. a better place. Having said that, I actually see what Brian Smith has done. He had one year left. There's no way in the world he was going to get anything beyond that one year. And at the same time, the Roosters are giving him four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, just... His whole form line yep. suggested he was going to take that job if it was there. Hmm. And for Newcastle to suddenly get upset about it, well, you know, you got your medicine did there they, because did you they got get exactly upset? what you bought. Paul, did they get upset or did they just realise that they can't see out the end of the, 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 the rest of this season without being under their heavy, immense scrutiny of, of the media? Everything, any time you want fast, they're going to be when all they pick up the newspaper and Brian Smith's telling uh, readers what he's going to do with the Roosters next year. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's, you know, well, that, I mean, that was a mistake. Certainly the players were upset and they felt like he'd sold out a little bit and that, yeah. that they'd lost him and that, that fractured the relationship between the coach and players and they just could not muster the enthusiasm. With their season yeah. on the line, they played three very ordinary games in a row. Shockers. Which prompted this decision and, at the end. And Jenny, you're talking about a club on the edge. They only had to drop 5% in commitment and that's a disaster. Yeah, that's They're right. just not that good. That's right. They? And anyone who has a coach get out of his contract in the middle of his contract or in the middle of the season and attempts to play out the rest of the season with him still in, in the coaching role, they deserve everything they get because it's a form it was, of we saw the evidence too because when this guy was appointed to as the coach and the players were told and told that not only was he going to take them through the end of this year but he was there for the next two years they actually gave a cheer and a clap and, and beauty and suddenly that the mood in the joint just lifted mm. and that's that's all you need when it's as tight as it is as it is now that's all you need sometimes well, it was a lovely headaches, uh, Rick Stone I'm sure he's a Stone Mike Good start for the game's newest coach, who I spoke to last night. And I started by asking him, are uh, he and predecessor Brian Smith very different or, in fact, pretty similar in their outlook? Well, obviously, working with Brian the last couple of years, I, I like to think we're pretty similar. He's educated me a fair bit in the way he looks at the game, and I suppose the way our club looks at the game now. So I don't think you'll see a lot, of, lot different from Newcastle. Where's the side's weakness? What needs to change with how you're playing footy? 
Uh, definitely attitude, there's no doubt about it. I think the Knights have shown they've got some talent. Um, you know, we just asked the boys to have a look at around and see if there was 5 or 10% they could find for us because obviously it's been missing somewhere. Resisted the temptation last night, Rick Stone. Stewart as a coach coming in, in in these circumstances. Do you put your stamp on it immediately and make changes? No, I don't think you, I don't think you need to. I mean, he would have been there as part of Brian Smith's plan mm. of the way that he worked the last two years, and he would have been part of the selection process and the way that they're preparing sides. So obviously he feels that it was on the right track. He might, might tickle with a few things or the way they played, but radical changes won't come into it with three rounds to go. Braith, as a player, do you expect changes? Do you fear changes? Yeah, after you lose a few games in a row, and a new coach is brought in, you do expect that there could be a few changes in the team, but you don't want to be changing around too much. You just want to try and get out there with the same squad and try and turn things around as quick as possible. Yeah, a big couple of weeks for former Knights coach and, in fact, your new coach, Brian Smith, next year. Any contact between yourself and the new coach? No, not at all. Um, you know, a few players have been looking over mm. their shoulders and I'm sure he'll be watching the games intently yeah. and you know, we're looking forward to uh, getting him over and uh, hopefully having a good season with him. What's protocol, coach? No. Well, do you, do you come in, do you, do you cast your eye over? Oh, well, you'd be casting your eye over, but out of respect to Freddie, I think he'll be staying away from the players mm. and not contact them. I think he'll be looking at his, his uh, assistant uh, coaches and his staff mm. there and what's going to be uh, there next year and also to the recruitment uh, of players. Gives it to Murray and he tries them on. He tests them out and almost got through. Good flick pass. They keep it alive. He goes back to Junior Sal. Out the back to Goose from Tova. It goes to Hilda. There's a chance to the right. Taya can't get away from Nelson. He popped it backwards. They can get away. Houston for Lalia for McDougal. Chopped down from behind. He lost the ball backwards. And this will be a Newcastle try. Staying alive, a hit still in Stewie's mind. That was our try of the week. Time for sport now with Alex Cullen, and it's anyone's guess who'll make the NRL top eight this year. That's exactly right, Ian. The Knights have made things very interesting. We'll tell you who's in and who's out next. And after the Knights blew the storm off the park in Newcastle, it's not just Rick Stone's kids who love Brian Smith's replacement. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. Well, here's the ladder, and the Knights' win pushed the Eels back out of the top eight, but still just one point behind the fifth-placed Tigers behind the, before their clash this week. With uh, three games to go, the last four finals places remain wide open. Well, you've got some news about an interesting initiative at the Knights. Yeah, the Knights uh, deserve some credit for this. They're about to launch a, a card which they're going to give to all of their players. On one side will be all of the negative headlines that we've seen in the NRL this year. On the other will be the club's rules and the club's uh, what, the, what they expect the players to live by and also contact numbers if the players do get into any trouble whilst they're out and they're expected to carry these cards with them all the time. They can contact their football manager or the welfare officer. The numbers will be on those cards so the Knights deserve some credit for forward thinking on that. That is good work, actually very nice. But now, talk a bit more footy, uh, Newcastle moved back into the top eight last Monday night when they defeated the Melbourne Storm 26 to 14. Uh, it was a very good win, one of their stars joins us right now. Please make him welcome, Jared Mullen. Yeah. Welcome, Jared. Hey, boys, how are you? Great win the other night. Have to what? ask you this question, you know, it's probably coming. Um, Brian Smith is a coach. When he made the decision to go to the Roosters, what effect did that have on the club? It would appear from watching you play those three or four games that everyone just went, well, that'll do us. Yeah, I think to start off, was, I think it was a bit of a coincidence. Uh, we were a bit down on confidence. And obviously when uh, Brian announced that, um, you know, it was a bit of a shock to the players to start off with. but. You know, Brian's not the one out there making the tackles and, you know, making the kicks and, you know, kicking the ball and that type of stuff. So we just need to put our head down and change our confidence. And, um, you know, we picked it up last week, I thought. So I think that's an unfair question. I don't think you can speak on behalf of the club. And Brian Smith basically said, well, look, I don't know if that's, it's had a distraction. You'll have to ask each and every player. I'd rather ask you, were you distracted at all or what effect did it have on Jared Mullen? Yeah, like I, said, like I said before, it was a bit of a shock, obviously. You know, announcing you know he's going to another club, sort of when we're in a crucial time of our um, season. But uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be I would be lying if I was saying it sort of didn't affect me too much. But it didn't didn't take three weeks sort of to get over it. It um, you know it probably sort of hit you for the first couple of days, and 
you know, we just had to put our head down and, and uh, keep playing well. But, uh, you know, like I said before, we're a bit down on confidence and, um, you know, we picked it up last week. Well, well, last one on the issue, is it possible to say, hypothetically, if Brian Smith was still in charge Monday night, would the result have been different? Was it just the, the Knights were due to bounce back like that or was it because Rick Stone took over? Well, like I said before, it might have been a bit of a coincidence, <laughs> but uh, no, I think we just had a real good week at training. Uh, we knew it was a crunch game for us, uh, mm. especially Melbourne at home. Uh, you know, they got us down there and it was a bit of a heartbreaking loss for us, but uh, you know, we got them back there and um, like I said, it's just a confidence booster for us. Well, tell us a little bit about Rick Stone. Um, he's been behind the scenes there for a couple of years now as assistant. Uh, what's his go? What's his career? I know he coached at Burley for five years. Yep. Just tell us how he's changed uh, the team in a week. Yeah, he, he came in under Hags there and he had a couple of years there. Then obviously he's been under Brian for the past couple of years. So I think he was sort of the, the main pick to sort of come in. And uh, he's a very laid back character, you know, loves a beer, you know, all that type of stuff. And all the players get along with him very well. And I uh, you know, just love playing for him. And, uh, you know, we had a great week at training last week and uh, it showed now football. It was a great win on Monday night against some quality opposition, but it's not going to mean a whole lot if you don't back it up this week. To me, for Newcastle, the real test is what you do after that performance. How, how is the feeling there? What's, what's the preparation been like? North Queensland going to be very, very tough as well. Oh, yeah, obviously, um, you know, players like Jonathan Thurston and Matty Bowen are playing great football for the Cowboys there. So, you know, you can't shut down players like that. you just got to limit their sort of ability. And uh, I think we just need to get back to what we do, what we were doing start, at the start of the year and string a few wins together and, you know, hopefully we can uh, string a few more leading to the semifinals. We can see the stats here. The, uh, the centre bet price is $2.50 for the Knights and that is on the back of a very, very good home uh, record this year and your run home after that is the Raiders and the Panthers I mean the Raiders down in Canberra I mean that's as tough as playing a top four side right at the moment because uh, they've got the Dragons as a scout they've got a 56 nil win over Brisbane as well yeah they're a very hard team to play down there Canberra and you know hopefully we can get the win up against uh, Cowboys this weekend and I think that's our crunch game Monday night down there it's gonna be freezing cold mm. but uh, hopefully we can get the Chockies I'll get you to commit to one thing if there was uh, if there's one team you wouldn't want to play a game against in the competition. I guess I'm asking you in one way or another which is the best team in the competition. But w what would that team be? Oh, I, th I think um, I think the I think the Dragons are playing some 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 great football at the moment and uh, obviously Jamie Seward and you know Wendell Sale are playing some of their best football of their career but uh, in, on saying that we beat them down at Cogger one, that's a very hard away game to play so um, yeah we can take a bit of confidence out of that and uh, we've beat you know every team in the top four so yeah. Same question to you Luke. Who's the best side you've played this year? Yeah, I think the Dragons are certainly up there. They're very consistent. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, I think it's wide open at the moment. I think there's uh, teams coming with late runs and wouldn't surprise me to see, you know, some uh, teams lower in the top eight beat some sides higher in the top eight. Got to give uh, second row Zeb Taylor a rap. He's playing outstanding footy. Every time he got the ball the other night, he beat at least one tackle. And he's really come on, hasn't he? Oh, mate, he's a great player, Zeb. He's a great club to have around. And... Uh, you know, he's just on for another couple of years at the club, so it's very exciting, and uh, the future looks good there. I see. I see you tip the Cowboys. Yeah, I t yeah. I just think it's on what it's, premise? Um, not sure. Energy Australia worries me because I mm. think Newcastle are very good at home there, but I, I, I just I want Newcastle to back up what they did on, on Monday night, and that's not going to be to be easy. Um, it, it could go either way, but so could so many of them mm. this weekend. Um, there was a good story in the Newcastle Herald today about young Siono, Sione Tovu, who played his first grade debut last week. Now, he's not in the side this week, but he's overcome some problems. I think he, he lost his father and his older brother um, a couple of years ago. And it's a wonderful story to see young players like that come through and, and, and play first grade. So he, he was a, a plus for you on Monday night as well, I thought. Oh, for sure. He went forward you know, better than any of our forwards sort of went forward on the, on the weekend. And uh, to make your debut against the Melbourne Storm, who's a great forward yeah. pack, it's a, it's a credit to him and his family. And, uh, you know, he's been training a lot uh, every every um, every uh, session with us there at the Knights. And uh, he's uh, put his head down and he's playing some good footy. Jared, thanks for your time again. How's the old man, Stevie? Going good? Yeah, he's going all right, the big fellow. He's yeah. whacking away at the mines here. Working so. in the coal mines tonight, yeah. you said? Open cut. Good man. Yeah. Pretty good second row back in his day, too. <laughs> Please thank Jared Mullen for us. <laughs>
as has become the norm on Super Saturday. Beautiful blue sky greeting us this time at Energy Australia Stadium in Newcastle. Good afternoon, Matt Russell along with Scott Sadler to kick off your round 24 Super Saturday. And aren't there some teams treading the tightrope at the moment? We saw it last night. We'll see it again this afternoon. Firstly in the Toyota Cup and then the NRL to follow with the Knights hosting the Cowboys. It's a great game to look forward to. It's not a good game to try and pick the winner in Scott Yeah, Sadler. you're right, Matty. Two weeks ago, we saw the Cowboys and they were touted as possible Premiership favourites. Two weeks ago, Newcastle Knights season was supposedly finished. How uh, a week in rugby league can change. Now we're seeing here a clash here that I know, and we know that there's a lot of pre-sold tickets here this afternoon. What we do know is it's going to be a great atmosphere. Good ball. Away to the Lear. He comes towards Slater. Draws and passes. Gives it to Mullen. Now to Fua. He beat Brett Finch's tackle. Went straight through them. Taya can't get away from Nelson. He popped it backwards. They can get away. Houston for the Lear. For McDougal. And this will be a Newcastle try. Yes, the Knights led Melbourne 26-0. They won 26-14. Will it be two from two for new coach Rick Stone when they host the Cowboys from 5.30pm Eastern here on Super Saturday? Both teams wake up this morning outside of the eight. Newcastle finishes against Canberra and Penrith. North Queensland against Brisbane and Roosters. But firstly, they've got each other in a crucial matchup. Scott Sattler, I said at the top of the show how hard it is to pick. What are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to a new coach. Uh, a new found uh, enthusiasm from the side. Uh, a big crowd expected. A lot of pre-sold uh, sale tickets, like I mentioned earlier on. But uh, I'm excited to see both teams outside the eight. Who's going to handle the tightrope the most? That's what I'm going. That's what I'm interested to see. And usually, see the champions stand up. Your Thurston's, your Bowens, your, your Jared Mullins, your Adam McDougals. And the predictions are that there'll be a massive crowd here at Energy Australia yeah, Stadium. Yeah, yeah, big set, uh, pre-sold tickets. Uh, we've heard uh, earlier on. So um, Newcastle Knights, they they love their team. Now they've had a win last week against the Melbourne Storm, uh, they can see some light at the end of the tunnel leading into the finals. A new coach and a new attitude. The night started the Stone Age on a perfect note, rumbling the Storm on Monday night footy. But they're not out of the woods just yet. And this will be a Newcastle try! In their way tonight, a Cowboys side dumped out of the eight and stinging after back-to-back -back losses. We need to really have a reality check now if we're going to go any further in the season. Henry's read the riot act. Now, can Thurston and his troops respond? Find out as Super Saturday continues, live on Fox Sports. Round 24 in beautiful sunshine continues from EAS. It is the Newcastle Knights playing host to the North Queensland Cowboys. Ninth versus 11th on the competition ladder as it stands. What a cracking night to start this round. Four great teams, two great games. But I thought the biggest positive was our greatest asset, you the fans. 50,000 of them turning up for Friday night and Greg Alexander we're hoping to keep the buzz. Yeah look I, I think we're going to get another big one here mm. today talking to Tony Butterfield from the night sales 15,000 pre-sold tickets yep. so I think we'll, we'll get close to 20,000 here and I'm sure the Knights fans are ready to rally behind their team who he got themselves back into the competition with a win on Monday night and up against a, a Cowboys outfit that are as desperate. Certainly are. There are several sides very, very desperate at the moment. And I'll tell you what, last night did nothing to, to simplify the semi-final equation. We've got 9th and 11th highlighted there. That is this game. Of course, immediately following us here at EAS is the Penrith Panthers and South Sydney Rabbitohs. Two wonderful games on Super Saturday. Uh, the Bulldogs, I guess, uh, starting to fancy their chances, perhaps of a minor premiership. Yeah, uh, Dragons going down to the, the Brisbane Broncos, of course, but the, the teams we're dealing with here tonight, Newcastle gave themselves a little bit of breathing space yeah. with a win on Monday night, but not much. Uh, the Cowboys, well, they've put themselves under all sorts mm. of pressure with only having only won one mm. from their last five matches. So. Uh, I think the equation's pretty simple for the Cowboys. They've got to keep winning. They do have to keep winning. The Cowboys, also really interesting stat, have lost their last 10 games in New South Wales. And the Knights fans certainly hoping that continues. So too, the Knights coach, Rick Stone, who Greg spoke to earlier. Rick, your first night in charge. It was a terrific win on Monday night and a much-needed one. How's preparations been for the Cowboys this week? 
Yeah, obviously short with only five days to prepare, but um, the energy feels good again. And um, if we match a little bit of that with some execution, um, I think we'll be competitive again. What do you think was there on Monday that had been missing in, in recent weeks? I just think that extra 5 or 10% in preparation, also performance, we asked for the boys and I think we got that. Um, we're, we're looking to see the same sort of thing this week and making sure they repeat it. Hopefully short turnaround will be in our advantage this week. Gave you a bit of breathing space, but with the results last night, you're back outside the eight. So that win won't count for much if you don't get the cash here tonight. I suppose that's a big question. Um, backing it up again after a short turnaround against another quality opposition who's going to be desperate. Now, big men have been a problem. You've battled without a, a couple of key ones this year, but the return of Steve Simpson this afternoon, uh, a big plus. Yeah, definitely. Also Danny Wicks, which will help us in the middle. Uh, obviously, the Cowboys with their pack are, you know, really strong crew. And, you know, we're, we're really expecting some good impact from Steve Simpson and Danny Wicks. I suppose every coach that comes up against the Cowboys asks a question, uh, what do you do about stopping Jonathan Thurston and Matt Bowen? Anything special for them today? Well, hopefully simple as keeping the ball away from to begin with and then obviously minimising the opportunities they get with quick play, the balls to work off the back with some space around them. That, that'll be important for us, but if we can make sure we get an even share of possession, um, that's going to help us massively. Here, here's how Newcastle will line up today. Aquila Uarte coming in to replace uh, Keith Lalia on the wing and also the other change to the side. Marvin Caruana uh, off the bench. Corey Patterson will come onto the, onto the bench now. It, Steve Rickstone just spoke about mm. size. Corey Patterson will add that, along with Danny Wicks, who comes in after missing Monday night's game, and the important inclusion of Steve Simpson. Otherwise, the side unchanged from the one that beat Melbourne on Monday. As far as size goes, too, Chris Houston uh, starting to, uh, this afternoon. Uh, Richard Fayoso, in fact, started on Monday night. Houston, a bigger frame, and will go a long way to, to giving them the authority in that centre third. But uh, they're going to, again, be reliant on their number seven, your former number seven, in Jared Mullen. Um, overlooked for State of Origin this year, when many thought he, he should have got the nod. Um, he continues to perform and, and direct this side around the park well. Yeah, look, he had a solid performance on Monday night. It wasn't brilliant, but he did some terrific things. And you'd think if, if the Knights are to win here tonight uh, and go on to play semi-final football, most of it will revolve around Jared Mullen. That was a 40-20, which led to points. So Jared Mullen can come up with a bit, the big plays when necessary, backing up on the inside. Got good speed, Jared Mullen. Look, if, if a platform is laid for him, we know that he's got the tools uh, to rip a part any yeah. defensive outfit so uh, again the number seven uh, is a key man for the Knights. Also Isaac de Goyce a dummy half, Mullen one side, Kurt Gidley the other and we saw Gidley and, and we don't have to say how invaluable is he because he's got both aspects of the game covered but if Mullen's patrolling one side this bloke patrols the other. Yeah defensively fantastic came up with a couple of big plays on Monday night uh, and heavily involved. I think Kirk Gidley the skipper took it upon himself to get the, the Knights out of the hole they had been in. Uh, very dangerous when he ran the ball as we saw late on a try there for Lalia. Uh, kicked the goal from the sideline but very dangerous when he was running drifting across the field looking to pick up runners. Uh, the, the Cowboys will have to watch that tonight. We heard Rick Stone say welcome addition back tonight was a little bit of size and a few kilos. Well, not all of the big boppers are back and Scotty Sattler is sidelined with one of them. I'm down here with injured front row Benny Cross and Benny, the importance of the game without saying tonight. Yeah, it is. This uh, Every week's been our uh, do or die for our season, pretty much last week and this week and, and more so for next week and the week after. So semi-final football for us um, and also for Cowboys as well. So they're both teams with a lot on the line. A week in rugby league, how things can change. You've got a, a new head coach and last Monday night it looked like a completely new team. Yeah, we, and we felt like a, a new team too. Um, just the, the weight of expectations, not knowing who the coach was going to be long term and short term, sort of rested a few minds and, and, and now that Stoney's got the job, uh, the boys can just concentrate on what they're going to do out in the field. Rick Stone, his, uh, his strengths? Um, his relationship with the players is quite relaxed, but um, he can be firm and switch on in head coaching mode straight away. And he can be a grumble bum sometimes too, which is good. Now, you being injured, uh, you as a senior player looking for players to stand up. Mark Tafua, front row, very young to first grade. He's been impressive, hasn't he? Yeah, all year. He's really taken the reins with my departure and uh, with Dan Toller being out. Uh, he's just led for us every week and he's been there every game. I don't think he's missed a game this year. And just his work rates really well and his impact is just outstanding. And how good's these locals? Looks like it's going to be a big turnout. Uh, I think there was about 16,000 pre-sale tickets, so we'll get capacity tonight, I think. 
and yourself. Tour a bicep, you've been classed uh, out for the season, but if you do make the finals the Knights, uh, are you any chance? Yeah, I'm still training as if we're going to be back this year. Um, just got to get the go-ahead from the surgeon uh, and from the club doctor and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, fingers crossed that we can go deep into the semis and oh, it might be a chance. Well, let's hope we see you back, mate, and uh, thanks for joining us, pal. My pleasure, mate. Thank you. He's a big, big unit, Ben Cross. They would dearly love to have him back. Uh, I would suggest, though, the odds are slim at this stage, just judging from what he said. Yeah, look, but they have done a, a great job. And Sats mentioned Mark Tafua, who's been outstanding. Only missed one game this year. They lost Ben Cross and Dan Toller pretty early in the season. Yep. So they've done a remarkable job, uh, the big men, to step up and, and, and cover the loss of those two. Newcastle Knights have just made their way out onto Energy Australia Stadium for their warm-up here. But uh, a little presentation uh, in the dressing room and uh, high fives all round. Kirk Gidley being congratulated for his 150th game in the top grade here tonight. So much will revolve around their skipper. will be back after the break to preview the Cowboys. Here's Thurston going to O'Donnell. He puts a kick in off the legs there and to Fuwa play on for Travis Burns. He plays it quickly to Goyce for Mullen. Steps back on the inside away from Burns. A kick, a chance out wide for McManus who can jump. And if he didn't touch it, Chris Houston has scored for the Knights. Back to the right, Burns, second man again for Bowen. Cut out ball for Williams. In and away he goes. Payne from dummy half got past the front line. He gives it off to Steve Sutton. Now his ankle tapped, but he slides in for a try like a North Queensland Cowboys submarine. Payne, first man play. He goes to Gafusi. He spins in the tackle. Here's Watts to Thurston. First man play once again for Luke O'Donnell, who beat everybody, including the referee. A comprehensive victory that was round 11 this year up at Dairy Farmers Stadium. Now, you might notice the different socks that the Knights are wearing. It's... Um, the Hunter Prostate Awareness Campaign in regards to men's prostate cancer. It's the, the little prick campaign and it's about taking a simple test and, uh, and raising awareness, doing their part in the community, Brandy. Absolutely. It, it's a big killer of men and, and I think uh, it, it's great of the Knights to uh, bring about awareness of it and it is as simple as a blood test. Uh, over 40, I've had it done. You just go in, give some blood and... They'll give you the thumbs up or the thumbs down. So uh, it's as easy as that, and it's great that the Knights are bringing about awareness of a, of a, a pretty serious disease. It's the Knights and the Cowboys on Fox Sports. Round 24 started with the Eels and the Tigers, then the Broncos and the Dragons. It continues live around Australia on Fox Sports from Energy Australia Stadium in Newcastle, where the Newcastle Knights are at home to the North Queensland Cowboys. As it stands at the moment, 9th versus 11th on the competition ladder. Let's take a look and check out how the Cowboys will take the field here on a beautiful Saturday night in the Hunter. This weekend's round of cutthroat matches continues tonight. The Cowboys say their season is on the line against Newcastle. In last night's crucial results, the Eels moved back into the top eight, beating the Tigers. The Broncos surprised Premiership favourites the Dragons, while at half-time the Cowboys lead 22-8. to eight. Less than two minutes in and the Knights receive the benefit of doubt. McDougall cleaned up this mess. And then off a quick tap, Thurston found a massive opening. Oh, JT. It's a high-stake showdown in Newcastle tonight where the Knights trail the Cowboys 22-8 to eight, approaching half-time. Down 6-0, Jonathan Thurston scored a sneaky try for North Queensland. Oh, JT. Too good. The Knights went ahead 8-4 with a Kirk Gidley penalty goal. But there were some concerning signs for the home side when Ravelli and Thurston combined for the Cowboys' second try. Then hooker Anthony Watts did his own Jared Hayne impression with a chip and chase try from Dummy Harp. The winner will rejoin the top eight, but the loser will stay out. That's it. 
That is it. A remarkable comeback from the Newcastle Knights. And they move back into the top eight. And for the North Queensland Cowboys, that is it for 2009. 32 points to 26. An amazing, a remarkable game of rugby league. A beauty, if you like. All those things, Andy, it was, and it had everything. The first half where the Cowboys really blew the game wide open. Went in at half time, 22 points to eight. What an amazing turnaround it was from Newcastle. A couple of things to overcome, short turnaround. The win on Monday night. The Cowboys playing for their season and looked like it in the opening 40 minutes. The Knights remain alive. Let's go down onto the field with Scott. Well, kids, uh, you had to dig deep, didn't you? Yeah, mate, we did. Um, we made it hard for ourselves uh, in the first half, but, you know, the coach gave us a, a bit of a rev up, which we needed, and um, we, we turned it around in pretty good uh, pretty good fashion. It was just tough, at least. The side looks like you've got a lot, more, a lot more energy now that the coaching fiasco has sorted itself out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a distraction at the time, but we know what's happening with our future, and, um, you know, it's, it's always great to win at home, too. It only seems like yesterday you were driving a butcher's truck around Newcastle. Now 150 games is a great achievement for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have thought I would have played 150 miles in that trade, but uh, I mean, it's great to get a win at home, and, and thanks very much to the boys for putting in a lot of effort. Not about the boys, what about the fans? They've turned out in great numbers again, haven't they? Yeah, it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great town, great home support, and uh, it's going to be bigger for our last time going. Well, big game next week against the Raiders, mate. Thanks for joining us, and uh, congratulations on the win. Thanks very much, mate. It's up. They are back in the eight, the Newcastle Knights, and then the next fortnight is the Raiders and the Panthers. We'll be back here at EAS after the break. Joey, your team, Newcastle, last night, they got off to a pretty ordinary start and then roared home. Uh, North Queensland were pretty ordinary, but uh, Newcastle outstanding. Uh, I thought they'd gone at half time. They were down by 14 points, but second half, I don't know what Rick Stone said to the team or, or what was in their Gatorade, but they come out, they, they were on fire the second half. And, and Jared Mullen, he really stood up, and that's when he needs to stand up. When things aren't going their way, he needs to inspire the team, and he's done that. All right, we'll take a break on the Sunday footy show. Have a look at a couple of other of these, of these games we've seen so far this weekend. <laughs> With just one win in their last five games, the Cowboys had crashed from 5th to 11th and all but out of finals contention. Their predicament becoming even worse when the Knights crossed just two minutes in. Field. And a test here, a big collision. Adam McDougall is celebrating points. No, he's, now he's short of the he's line. Short of the line. The Where's ball. the ball finish up? The ball finishes so, up closer to the try line. Knock on. Knock on. But, Try benefit of the doubt given the mad dog. An unlikely kick from Luke O'Donnell helped the Cowboys to a soft penalty. At all. Ty Williams somehow was denied. Jonathan Thurston then taking everyone by surprise to score possibly the easiest try in the NRL's history. Too good. Too good. From there, the visitors really stepped it up a gear. Willie Tonga's intercept was spectacular before Thurston and Grant Ravelli combined to give the Cowboys the lead. Someone goes to Ravelli, back to Thurston. Good rugby league, North Queensland. Newcastle simply had no answer to North Queensland's brilliance. Kicking duties as Watts. Oh, Anthony Watts, that is superb. And at the break, the lead blew out to 14. Rubbers through. But the home side's attitude clearly changed at half time, with Cooper Vuna's charge setting the tone for an invigorated performance. De Goy straight through. Looking wide, looking for the mad dog. Oh, he enjoyed that one. And when Jared Mullins' kick ended up in Chris Houston's arms, the lead dropped to just two. What a try from the Knights! And here they come. 
The momentum of the match was now well and truly with Newcastle. And after a poor kick chase by the Cowboys, Mullen gave his side the lead. Three metre run from the Newcastle skipper. Now to Mullen from Taylor. Mullen takes it to the line and he's through. He has support inside and outside. Takes on Ty Williams himself and Newcastle lead. Mullen was again the danger man as he helped his side cross for their fifth. And despite a late try giving the Cowboys some hope, the Knights had done enough, recording a memorable come-from-behind victory. Yeah, they're calling Rick Stone Winston Churchill at the moment because that speech at half-time must have been Churchillian. What a turnaround, 32 points to 26 over the Cowboys. One of the other injuries that we didn't mention at the head, Ash Graham, that foot of his that he stayed out for two months with, he's re-injured that, so he's, you know, question mark for the clash with the Broncos on Friday night. Now, Andrew, how do you come from 22 points to eight to play a second half like that. Well, uh, by the look of the highlights, you just give the ball to Jared Mullen. Mm. And it was great to see Jared do that. In the past, uh, you know, Brian Smith and, and Rick Stone have really worked on Jared to try to inspire his teammates when things aren't going the night's way. And he did that last night. He, he really lifted the team with that individual try from 80 metres out and then laid one on for Wesley Guama. He was outstanding and it's, it's good to see. Dean, your thoughts on the night? Yeah, they, I remember playing them at Cogra and they throw a lot at you. They shift the ball and, um, you know, it makes the, the big fellas run around a lot and it ties you out and, you know, they're going to be a real handful if they get in the semis. We'll have a look at a few of the tries they did score in that second half because it was outstanding. But, Nathan, you were there at Parramatta when Brian Smith left and Jason Taylor came in and you had a wonderful run. Everything was going wrong while Brian Smith was there. We knew he was leaving and snapped the fingers. Jason Taylor comes in and you played great football. Uh... What's in that? Good question, mate. I don't really know. Um, when JT came over and took Smithy's spot, we just um, he just had a more re a relaxed approach to the game. Um, he was more thinking of it as a as an experience. He wasn't really trying to get us into the semi final, so everyone everything just relaxed. You know, we're playing soccer for warm up and all that type of stuff. But but once the uh, once we had that, I think it was ten straight wins. And we started having a chance for the semi finals. That's when he got back to a bit more Brian Smith mold, where everything got a bit more serious and switched on a bit more. But I think it's just one of those things that happens, you know. I don't think it has too much to do with what the coaching does. It's just the, it's just the way things go. It's the attitude, yeah. There's Jared Mullen and Andrew's been speaking about him. Just before we start having a look at this Dragons game from Friday night, who is Rick Stone? There's a lot of people out there watching this this morning who don't know who this bloke is. Uh, he grew up in Belmont, in Newcastle, suburb of, of Newcastle, and uh, he played his junior football with Paul Harrigan and went and played for South Sydney down here. And then he went away, uh, coached in Burley Bears for a number of years in the Queensland Cup, had great success up there. Now, he's been an assistant to Michael Hagan and Brian Smith for five years there, so, he, you know, his time, it, it, it was coming. And, um, you know, I applaud the Knights for coming out, you know, in the last week and giving him two years. I think it'll be, it'll be great for the club. Yeah, the spinnaker's up for Newcastle. <laughs> with a chief ball, Harrigan. And I draw your attention to Andrew Johns. He will catch you by surprise. Ruby, 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 Ruby. That is Andrew Johns like we have never seen before. I don't know what to say in reaction to the new look Andrew Johns. Thirteen years ago, Joey. Good stage. It was a muddy good, day. Good stage of your life, that one. Did you win? No, I got beat by... 40 oh, and 50 or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the book. What motivated the red hair that day? Oh, come on, Tim. I can't remember those days. <laughs> Get the book and understand. Oh, you'll understand why. You can always find a way for a plug, lovely. Now, from the Cowboys Knights, well done to the Knights. Terrific comeback, 22-8. Trailing at half time. Second half, though, Jared Mullen was the man that uh, Joey Johns esque in the imprimatur he put on the match in the second 40 minutes of this 80 metre try. Sensational. So, here's my good mate Andy Raymond on Fox Sports suggested that uh, Newcastle would not win this game because every time uh, <laughs> the, the Cowboys score 20 points, they win. Mm. I had a feeling the Knights might come back, and they did in a big way. And uh, Jared Mullen, he played probably. Mm. This year, along with Benji Marshall, they've gone to that next level. Um, we used to watch Marshall play and, and Jared Mullen, and every game you thought, maybe this could be the game they get injured, and they might be out for a month or six weeks. I think they've gotten over that hump. Now that Benji, Benji Marshall's now, along with Jared Mullen, they're playing consistently physical footy, mm. and it's helping mm. their teams. Yeah, a it, was lot. A, it was a wonderful second-half performance.
Well, Newcastle produced a stunning second half comeback to beat North Queensland last night. Elsewhere, Penrith won by 30 to end the Rabbitohs season, while the Knights came back from 14 points down against the Cows. Newcastle hit the front in just the second minute, but with Jonathan Thurston scheming. Ah, oh, JT, too good. The first half belonged to the Cowboys. He grabbed a double, while Anthony Watts did all the work for himself for their third. Oh, Anthony Watts, that is superb. They led by 14 at the break, but the Knights were a different side when they returned. What a try. Roping in the Cowboys with four tries in a 20-minute patch. Jared Mullen with the best of them. Takes on Ty Williams himself and Newcastle lead. Probably just pinned the ears and went for the corner and hopefully I was a bit too quick. There'll be plenty of love for Jared Mullen and Newcastle after he led the Knights to a comeback win over Jonathan Thurston's Cowboys. And Newcastle lead. It's sort of satisfying that you can sort of get a win up against the opposite number seven, but... Um, yeah, I don't see it as a personal sort of battle. North Queensland a week late with a vow to fight for their season. Now we've got a lot to play for, particularly our season now. Ben Davis, 7 News. All right, it's time now for... What's the Let's do it. Here we go. A little bit of news. First of all, we haven't heard anything out about the Newcastle Knights tonight. Now, I've got an incredible story, but before we run the vision, I want to say if anyone's a bit squirmish, doesn't like to see accidents on the field, I'd like you to look away for a few seconds because I'm talking about Cameron Serraldo, who suffered a dislocated ankle and broken leg way back in round two this year uh, against the Sharks. Now, at the time, you thought, well, there's no way he'll play again this year. Now, Cameron Serraldo has worked his butt off to get back. He is back in full training. He's running. He's doing full contact. He may play again next week or, if they make the first week of the finals, Cameron Serraldo. I think that's an outstanding comeback and certainly shows a bloke dedicated. Wasn't about to give up on his season. Even if it was one game, he was going to make it back. So, well done, Cameron Serraldo. Also, James McManus. Uh, State of Origin winger hasn't played since round 14 for the Knights. He is also back running, so uh, available if the Knights can keep their charge going into the finals to get a couple of good players back there. $5,000. Look, we've got one more game to look at uh, tonight on the footy show. That's Monday night footy this week. Raiders versus the Knights. Uh, the Knights of the top eight teams have the worst away record in the competition. Their record down in Canberra is poor. I reckon this is a huge danger game. In fact, Canberra... Even though they lost to the Warriors away last week, their previous home form has been outstanding, including a win over your mob, Dill. I reckon the Raiders can throw a spanner into the works on Monday night. Canberra, I know firsthand they're very hard to beat down there, but I just think Newcastle have got too much to play for. And with uh, Rick Stone, the rock star, I think they're going to win this game. Yeah, playing for plenty, and uh, they have hit form. They're playing great footy. So I think the Knights down there, can, they've got something to aim for, and they'll do it. Well, you'll both be wrong. The Raiders Maybe. have won four out of their past five at home. I think they'll do it again Monday night. Go the green machine. No, they're thinking Mad Monday. Now to the eight, and the makeup is in the Knights' hands. If they win tonight against the Raiders, both Newcastle and the Yields are in the final series, irrespective of results in the last round. But if the Knights lose, it opens the way for the Panthers to sneak in. The Panthers play Newcastle next Sunday, and the winner of that game will advance. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. and the Knights on Monday Night Football. Welcome to the pre-game show on Bundy Rum's Monday Night Footy tonight. Kurt Gidley and his band of Merry Knights descend on the nation's capital to lock up a place in this year's final series. He is hoping for Knights fans anyway in their way. That man, Alan Tung, and a Raiders side that's made a bit of a habit cutting down higher, more fancied opponents in Canberra recently. Both the Broncos and Dragons were sent packing with their tails between their legs this season. So we're expecting a tough game tonight from Canberra. G'day everyone, Ryan Feeler with you again for the Bundy pregame show. Back in the studio tonight with uh, Big Gordy Tallis, Gary Freeman, 
and Wayne Pearce. For the Newcastle Knights, they too are 1 through 17. No changes to the program. Gidley, Uate, Sao, McDougall and Verna with Rogers and Mullen at 6 and 7. Tafua, De Goys and Houston are up front. The three back rowers, Simpson, Taya and Hilda. The bench remains stable. Naguama, Caruana, Fayoso and Wicks. The 18th man is Corey Patterson. The coach is Rick Stone. I caught up with him and David Ferner earlier. Rick, are you treating this legitimately as elimination semi-final number one? Well, I don't know about elimination, that's for sure, but we're trying to take a semi-final feel into this game. You know, if we make the semi-finals, obviously we'll be likely to be playing away from home and this is a good place to start. Hard to plan for Canberra in the respect you're never quite sure which Canberra side is going to turn up. Yeah, I think we're planning for the right one today. You know, the one that played Saints here a couple of weeks ago was really impressive and their commitment and desire that night was first class and that's what we're ready for. Internally, what have you concentrated on throughout the week? I think the things we can control, you know, anything down here about the travel and the weather and whatever, we, we've left that out of our mind. We understand that might be a little bit different to our home conditions, but um, let's generate our own enthusiasm and make sure we can control the things that we actually can. Camera, too good for Newcastle. They've beaten them 30 points to 14, and the Knights will go down the last day of the home and away season to see if they can qualify as the last team in the finals in 2009. And once again, more questions about this premiership. We've had the Dragons beaten by a side outside the eight in the Bunnies. Tonight, the Raiders sitting down the bottom end of the table. Get the job done against the Newcastle Knights. They had the opportunity to secure a place in the top eight tonight. They'll have to wait till next week and hopefully players like Rogers and Taya will be available. But we thought there was a, a, a Raiders performance brewing and that's exactly what we got. Yes, we did. They were good. They scored in the second minute of the game in their first possession after the kickoff was allowed to bounce and went dead. That really hurt Newcastle, and they're on the back foot from that point on. Let's go downstairs to Andy Raymond. Yeah, Jared uh, Mullen with us. It didn't work tonight. What went wrong? Uh, I just think we got out enthused. Uh, they're very enthusiastic at home, and uh, to their credit, they played great tonight. But, uh, you know, we've got to keep our heads held high. We still got a shot to the finals, and uh, uh, looking forward to next week. That's the beauty of it. You still control your own destiny, but the importance of next week now, it's, it's winner makes the finals. Yeah, for sure, but... Uh, you know, I think we play our best footy when we're under pressure. You know, those two wins coming back from those three bad losses. So, um, no, if we can put in a good show next week. What needs to change? Uh, I think our attitude, they see our enthusiasts there. And uh, no, we just, I think we just need to pick up our form away from home. But hopefully um, now we show our old form at home next week. Well done, champ. OK, well, let's go to the media conferences. Uh, tonight, of course, the Raiders uh, beating the Knights in Canberra 30, point, uh, 30 points to 14. Let's go to the Newcastle media conference. And here's Knights coach Rick Stone, who's had his first loss as a coach, Rick, no, and Adam McDougall. Conditions before the game, after the game, I guess we can reflect. But does it, the chill, the cold, does it have anything to do with away teams struggling down here? Well, I think it's more the conditions and how the Raiders can play to the conditions and the way they execute in those conditions. I think that's a, a decent advantage um, to them. And the, and the way, obviously, they finish their sets and put pressure on us with last plays was, you know, exceptional, I thought. Were they good? Were you bad? Combination? Yeah, a bit of both, that's for sure. Um, obviously, not, not starting with a kickoff in the, in, the, in the first set of the game doesn't help. And, um, you know, from there on, we, we made some errors. Uh, we were a little bit ill-disciplined and we gave the Raiders a sort of field position that they needed to um, actually find a couple of those kicks. Uh, I thought we defended OK. I thought our energy was OK for most of the night, but we frustrated ourselves at times and I think we compounded our errors and, and sometimes our discipline let us down. Big picture, Rick, can you look past and the disappointment and realise there's a game now to win on Sunday next week at home and you're in the finals? Oh, definitely. You know, we just spoke about that in the sheds. We're disappointed in, in not, not our effort tonight, but obviously our execution and the, and the way we went about the game. But um, we realised it's six days and we've got to play again and we still control our own destiny. And you've been big games, it's been a long, you know, long career. I mean, is that the focus now, just to look at that one game back home on Sunday and try and put this behind you as quickly as possible? Well, that's all we can do, really. So. Um, Obviously put the disappointment of tonight. Our destiny's been in our, our own hands. It was there tonight for us to take and uh, we didn't. So um, thankfully we get another opportunity on Sunday. What needs to change, Adam, next week? Oh, the scoreboard for starters. <laughs> That'll help. But uh, 
Yeah, obviously, um, just we made a lot of errors and put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Full credit to them, they capitalised on it. And as Rick said, they played to the conditions better than we did. And, um, you know, if we play like that next week, we're going to make it hard for ourselves as well. So we need to find the form that we found in uh, the two games previously, and hopefully we can do that. Are you concerned you might be out without Ben Rogers next week? I suppose it's a possibility. Yeah, they can have a look at that. Um, I think Zeb Tay is more of an issue for us at the moment. You know, it looks like a pop shoulder, and he, he could be gone for you know a number of weeks. So that's our major concern. Was that chicken wing rearing its head, or was it the way he fell? I think it was more the way he fell. I didn't get a good look at the replay, but um, yeah, well, you know, I'm not concerned about that at this stage. Any other injuries? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, you know, there's a few bumps and bruises, but, um, you know, I think, obviously, Zeb Tay being our major. Adam is a budding mixed martial artist and um, potential cage fighter when your career finishes. Uh, Benny Rogers, his right hands, what do you think? Yeah, well, I didn't really see it, to be fair. I was too busy, um, I don't know, kicking stones, so I didn't really see the fight. But, uh, obviously, um, he fancies himself. He's from the Druitt, so they all fancy themselves out from Mount Druitt Way, so he obviously knows how to throw them, I suppose. You have to out there. Rick, the Raiders are making now the Dragons, the Broncos and you guys in the last month. Are they a team that you're probably relieved aren't going to be in the finals this year? Yeah, the Raiders, particularly in these conditions, are a good footy side, you know. When, when they get on a roll and when they can continue to sort of put the screws into you with their kicking game and, and, and the way, the options that they've got at the end of their sets, obviously, you know, they're a dangerous team. And they've got some real classy young players, you know, Dugan, especially Croker. You know, they're, they're, they're really good players and they're going to be uh, good players for a long time. Adam, how do the Raiders compare to some of the other top teams you played? Like tonight, they got off to a blistering start, and, and kind of you guys are playing catch up for the rest of the game. Yeah, well, on the way they played tonight, they're definitely a top eight side. So they're a very physical side, very big side, and um, as Rick said, you know they're probably arguably the hardest side apart from probably Melbourne to play at home. So you know they're a tough side, and they've shown in the you know the last couple of wins they've had at home against Brisbane, where they beat them by 50, and then uh, obviously the Dragons as well. So they're a top side, and unfortunately. Um, you know, they showed that again once tonight against us. Did you watch that game against the Dragons and, and then expect them to come out as, as physical as they did in that game? Oh, we knew that. You know, Rick did his homework during the week with us and, you know, I suppose um, we've seen a lot of their highlights because they were crossing the try, try line a fair bit in them two games. So we knew what to expect. And as I said, we're our, we're our own worst enemy tonight with the amount of ball we gave them. We were always going to make them look good. Rick, do you take something out of it? As messy as the game was for a lot of it for you guys, and, and the, the ill-discipline and the fight in the middle of the second half, it didn't blow out as it has done on, on this ground for you guys plenty of times over the years? Yeah, I think the, the team showed a fair bit of character there, Keeps, the second half, and we got to down a little bit in the, in the second half, and I said, look, let's just keep fighting and, and show something to take in the next week, and I think the boys responded there. Um, they probably made a lot of errors coming down the stretch because we were trying to force things a little bit, but at the same time, you know, re really proud of the way they continued to keep probing, keep asking some questions and keep trying for us. Zeb's probably been your best forward for two years. It'd be a pretty big loss to lose him for, for next week and possibly the finals. Yeah, massive blow. There's no doubt about it. Zeb has evolved really well as a footy player and in his position and his confidence in the last, particularly last six months. But, um, you know, he's going to be a massive loss. How's the coach? Two wins to start the uh, coaching career. First, first L in the column tonight. Yeah, oh, look, I can accept that pretty well on our performance tonight. Not, not um, you know, too worried about it. Obviously, you know, if you play like that against any opposition, but particularly Raiders down here, you know, you know, you're not going to take the two points away, and we're going to have to improve, regardless. You know, at home against Penrith next week, that's for sure. The Panthers are a side that can cut other teams up. You know, their back line's pretty ferocious. They've got a great forward pack. Um, you, you obviously got to be wary about that. Same thing could happen tonight. Um, next week is. What happened tonight? Absolutely. You know, they're a good team and there's still a chance of getting in the eight and, you know, they're looking to take our spot. So it'll be on next week. Actually, Rick, structurally, are there, are there similarities uh, or, or glaring differences between the Raiders 1-13 to and the Panthers 1-13? to um, Look, hard question. I, I think that they're a little bit different and possibly a little bit more direct. I think the Raiders have got a few more questions that are, are different to a lot of teams in the NRL and that's probably the hardest thing about defending against the Raiders and, and definitely some of those things, you know, executed well tonight r really hurt us. Have you got an opinion on the officials or not going to? No, no comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I like the way he handles those media conferences, Rick Stone. He's doing a good job in the few games he's had at the helm so far. Let's have a look at the NRL ladder as it stands uh, in this penultimate round of NRL football. And it's interesting at the top, isn't it? The Bulldogs, uh, if they win next week, they definitely will sew up the minor premiership because the Dragons are on the slide. The Titans are still an outside chance uh, for that uh, minor premiership. In fact, can they win it? No, they can't. No. Um, because uh, even on for and against, you would have to think the Bulldogs would sew that up. The Knights sneak into the top eight. And of course, ahead of those, the team with the momentum, the Eels. And as we have a look at the bottom eight, the Panthers are the only team with a remote chance of making it in to the finals. Plus, the young Raider on the end of this tells all about the attack. Rogers and Daniel. Newcastle 5-8th Ben Rogers' season could be over after he was charged over a wild brawl in last night's loss to Canberra. He is facing a five-match suspension. His victim, Daniel Vito, has also been charged for his role. And today he taunted Rogers over his punching power. Daniel Vito in more serene surrounds today. Different story last night when Ben Rogers used his head as a punching bag. The young Raider with this assessment of Rogers' boxing ability. Don't really call it a real punch, it didn't really go down, but yeah, you know. I was just getting ready for him to play the ball kind of thing, you know, a little cheap elbow kind of um, ticked me off and then I gave him a little shove and then all of a sudden boom. Moments later, Vito appeared to retaliate with a knee. He faces a three-match ban. Like, I wasn't trying to knee him, I was kind of pushed into it as well. The part-time actor defending his performance, suggesting he'd retaliate again in the same circumstances. Vito, though, has no doubt whether he's a lover or a fighter. Definitely a lover, but, you know, if I have to fight, I have to fight, you know. You know, you've got to defend yourself and, you know, you've got to stand up for yourself and never back down. But as he unveiled the Toyota Cup Under-20s Team of the Year, David Gallup doesn't want to repeat. You never want to see that on the field and I'm comfortable with the match review committee dealing with it. Not everyone offended though. He certainly got a couple of beauties in, didn't he? <laughs> Hit him straight on the chin. Canberra's win saving Penrith's season. For now, they'll play the Knights on Sunday, the winner earning a place in the finals. And with sporters next and it's do or die for the Panthers and the Knights this weekend. Indeed it is Peter they are fighting for the last spot in the finals and that's because the Raiders caused an upset last night's fiery match. The NRL's final eight won't be settled until Penrith play Newcastle in this weekend's final round. The Knights loss to the Raiders last night has given the Panthers some unexpected hope. Before last night's result the Panthers had little control of their finals destiny. Now it's totally in their own hands. And if they beat the Knights on Sunday, Penrith will secure eighth spot. I'd be fibbing if I didn't say, you know, I felt a little bit different this morning than I did yesterday morning. That would be, you know, an outrageous lie. It's the same for Newcastle. If they win at home, they're in the finals. There are no more second chances for either team. And they're looking to take our spot, so it'll be on next week. The Penrith players cheered every time the Raiders put points on the Knights. Vito will go! Canberra won 30-14, with two players finishing in the sin bin and on report. Ben Rogers is facing a five-game suspension for starting the fight, and Daniel Vito three for retaliating with a knee. Ooh, off you go. Daniel Vito. Time for sport now with Alex Collin and the Panthers back in the hunt for the finals. Yeah, their fans are pretty happy, Ian. Eh? The Panthers are ready to pounce for the last spot against Newcastle. That is next. While the Knights have to fight on without a key playmaker. Knights 5'8", Ben Rogers is likely to miss Sunday's showdown for a finals berth against Penrith after he was charged for fighting. Newcastle's loss to Canberra has given unwanted Luke Knight, Luke Walsh, the chance to hit his old club where it hurts. Plenty of love and determination at the Panthers after they were thrown a finals lifeline. Oh, I could see it in the boys' eyes though. They were you know, hungry and they were wanting to... Um win this week. They have something to play for after the Raiders upset the Knights. That's unbelievable. Flying Canberra winger Daniel Vito was king in the comfortable 30-14 win. You are kidding me. But Ben Rogers didn't like him. Rogers and Daniel Vito and they have come from absolutely everywhere. Oh, he's put one on his chin and had another go. 
Rogers now faces a five-week ban while use of the knees could cost veto three. But a win against the Knights would be priceless for Penrith halfback Luke Walsh, who left Newcastle mid-season. We knock them off, it will be. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to write about you know the, the kid that was turfed out from Newcastle. Luke gets distracted by it. I'm going to be peeved. Coach Matt Elliott will use his shoes to keep Walsh's mind on the job. They're about 11 and a half. You know, I'm going to introduce it to his backside. And with their season on the line, the Panthers have promised their fans a much improved performance than what they dished up in the big loss against Parramatta last Friday night. Ken with sports next and the Knights accept their punishment. Be gone. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, wonderful stuff. Peter, they'll be without Ben Rogers in the must-win game against Penrith after he accepted a three-match ban for striking. In other league news, the Knights 5'8th Ben Rogers has accepted a three-match ban for his brain explosion against the Raiders and will miss Newcastle's must-win game against the Panthers. Rogers was hurting today. Missing such an important time of the year is a blow on all fronts. Obviously not proud of you know, the events that took place and I think I've, I've let my team down, I've let the club down. I think that's, a, that's the thing that's hurt me the most. Rogers says it's not in his nature to do what he did against the Raiders' Daniel Vito. The Knights 5'8 won't play again this year unless Newcastle make the grand final. And Rogers wasn't bitter that Vito reacted the way he did. I hope the young kid's all right. Once a night, always a night. Andrew Johns has been a consultant to the Dogs, but his heart is with his old club in the battle for eighth spot against Penrith. In a salivating duel, Jared Mullen will go one-on-one -on -one with former teammate Luke Walsh, who moved south to the foot of the mountains halfway through the season. Uh, we haven't played against uh, against each other since under-10s. We play a lot of juniors together after under-10s, but uh, no, it'll be a good, uh, good sledging match, I think. But really, first round or last round, it comes down to this. All right, let's look at the, the battle for the last spot. The Knights take on the Panthers up there in, uh, in Newcastle. It's our Sunday game on Channel 9. Home game for you, Pete. Uh, there's the prices there. And the Knights are having a big, um, a big gala day for their old boys. So all those nice players running out in front of some great champions, uh, like Paul Harrigan and Andrew Johns and the like. Yeah, they've, they've got a great record in old, uh, yeah. old boys. In fact, they've got a, a, kick -off, a two o'clock kickoff up there for that Legends game. A lot of players from the 88 team, the first team oh, they've yeah. ever played for them, Sam Stewart and all yeah, those yeah. guys. So, uh, probably Chew. Probably mm. Chew will probably be yeah. the Tony, Just Tony a Butts. bit of breaking news. If, if Penrith happened to beat the Knights on Sunday, I think you'll find I'll be out there at Penrith in the old stomping ground giving my guts for the footy show, doing some Next interviews week. and Excellent. things like that. Well, Next that's week, good. So. Well, let's hope they do that. Okay. Okay. Well, you can have next week off, mate. <laughs> You're going to have next week off. Um, the, the Newcastle Knights are held back now, putting Scotty Duro in there. The story today, uh, too, in the paper, talking about he's only had two games in the last uh, ten weeks. It's a big pressure spot for him because of the suspension of Ben Rogers. We get back to this this incident from um, from Monday night. It was pretty wild and and bordering on violent. Push and shove, Daniel Vito, Ben Rogers. The first punch is an absolute ripper. Vito gets his second win and comes back with a knee. But that first punch, that, uh, that did a lot of damage. Now, just again, back to the point. Now, Phil Haynes, well, I don't understand the point of dropping the young referee for the send-off. Why not drop the two referees there that missed an incident that has later got a bloke a three-week suspension? What, what did the referees not see on the night and the video referee not see on the night that the video review committee have picked up since and now Ben Rogers is out for the next three matches? What do you reckon, Darrell? I think, you, I think they both got what they deserved. I think, uh, I know what you're saying. Look, I agree with you to a certain degree. I mean, mm. both referees have got off scot-free, it appears. Uh, he need him, Vito. I mean, it's a bad look. It's a really bad look. And the punching from Ben Rogers is just unacceptable. Mm. You can't do that. You just can't start bashing a bloke on the paddock. I mean, we've tried to get rid of it for the last 10 or 15 years. It came back in. Five weeks, I think, was the right penalty. And I think three weeks for the other bloke was right as well. Scotty, what should be the rule on fighting? As a current player, you're the current player out of this panel. Mm. What should be the rule on fighting? In origin, we had, you know, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, no sin bin, third man in, get set off. Then yeah. on Monday night, you have sin bin, uh, Robbie Farrah, Anthony Watts. But it's, it's all over the place. Mate, it's a tough one. It's like every player in the competition would say, all we want is consistency across mm. the board. Um, but, I mean, it, it's hard. I mean, it was a pressure game for Newcastle. Mm. They sort of had to win to, to keep their final types hopes alive, so now they've got another chance. But, you know, it's just one of those things where it's a heated moment and 
you know, I'm sure um, Rogers would like to take that moment back. You can't king hit a bloke. Like, that, you can't hit a bloke who's not shaped up, ready to go. That, mm. That's different to the origin one, excuse me. Um, that we, You just can't throw one because you're going to do some damage if a bloke is not expecting it and Daniel Vito was not expecting that's it. That's why our referees are totally confused. They have no idea what to do. I, I make no, I have no idea what to do. They're all confused. They need some they leadership. They, they need to be told yep. how to handle it. Didn't Michael Wayman do the same thing last year to Daniel Conn? Yeah, that's your right. teammate. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what Wayman got, but I mean, you yeah. just can't do that. You just can't hit a bloke nah. out of the blue. All right. Good morning, and as we welcome you to the Sunday Footy Show, first up, we want to wish all the dads out there a very happy Father's Day. All the fathers, grandfathers, great grandfathers, father in laws, hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and spending some good quality family time. Now, over the next hour, we will be having a look at how the minor premiership was determined, how the top four was formulated, what can still happen between the teams that finish fifth and eighth, and a little bit later in the show, we'll be crossing to the Newcastle coach Rick Stone for what is an absolutely massive game for both the Newcastle Knights and the Penrith Panthers. It is naturally our television game. You'll see it at 4 o'clock. But a huge crowd up there. It is literally winner-take-all. One side stays alive in 2009. The other side will be going on their end-of-season trip. Now, joining Andrew Johns and myself in just a little while, we're a couple of season campaigners in Luke Patton, the Canterbury fullback, and the Parramatta captain, Nathan Kalis, will also be in very, very shortly. But, Joey, uh, up the F3, very, very shortly to have a look at this game. I know that you're out at Newcastle training during the week. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this one? Newcastle, you know, they should have consolidated the spot a little while back. So you know, there's, there's some pressure on, obviously, both of these teams. Yeah, it was disappointing Monday night to, for the Newcastle boys to get defeated by Canberra. But, you know, what a game. There's mail around the Petro Sibn Super might play. Uh, I think Tim Gilbert will, will fill us in on that. But, uh, you know, what a game. Hopefully it'll be a packed house up there. Have to. Yeah, no doubt about that. It'll be an absolute beauty up there. If you can't get out to the ground, as I say, you'll see our telecast from 4 o'clock. Pointed out this afternoon up at Energy Australia Stadium. And um, we, we really appreciate Rick Stone, the, the relatively new coach for Newcastle, joining us on what is the biggest day of his coaching life. And thank you, Rick. How are you feeling? Um, what, what's going through at the moment? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Or are you all of the above? Yeah, morning, gents. Yeah, it's been good so far. Been blessed with a beautiful day out here and uh, really looking forward to it. Quite calm at the moment, but might get a bit nervous as the time rolls on. Now, after the disappointment of Monday night where you could, you could have wrapped up a, a spot and I think probably should have consolidated over the last two months, is, it, is there some compensation there coming into this game that you still actually have the, uh, the ownership over your own destiny? Yeah, I think that's important. We're not relying on any other results for us to get home. You know, we've got a simple equation. Win today, we get in. We get in somewhere, but we're definitely in if we win today. So we've focused a little bit on that, and we've tried to downplay the game a little bit because we know with the old boys and the atmosphere that's going to be here, um, you know, the energy be right up there. We've just got to make sure our execution and um, our anticipation is spot on as well. Yeah, Stoney, there's been talk that Petro might make a surprise comeback. Will, will things change, the game plan change, if Petro plays? I don't think so. Not, not a lot. Obviously, he's a, he's a great warrior, Petro, and he's played plenty of big games right throughout his career, and I, I wouldn't expect anything but him playing really well um, again today if he does play. But, um, look, it's a warm day out here. He hasn't played for a while, so no doubt at some stage he'll be feeling it as well. OK, you've had your own injury concerns. Uh, no, Ben Rogers, well, out suspended, of course. Scott Duro, uh, a lot of talk about the fact he's only played two games in the last 13 weeks. Do you have any concerns about Scott being able to contribute for the full 80 and do well? No, I don't think so. Look, obviously, it's not ideal that he hasn't played a lot of games in the last um, 10 or so weeks, but he's been training hard. Um, Juro helps our team tick pretty well when he, um, when he plays with our team. No doubt he, he's probably one of the better halfbacks in the club and, and the probably combo he's got with Mullow will be a real good one and I'm looking forward to seeing him play. I know he's excited about it and the boys are pumped to have such a quality replacement come in at this late stage of the year. Yes, Tony, just a question for yourself. How have things changed for yourself since you've taken over as first grade coach? Has, has much changed? Yeah, a little bit, Joe, that's for sure. Um, you probably don't get as much time to concentrate on the actual purest footies footy side of things, that's for sure. You've got a lot of other commitments and not so much distractions, but more commitments and, you know, some corporate stuff that you've got to deal with. Um, I suppose that's how Smitty put a good team around him and I'm, I'm looking to do the same. Keep, keep as many blokes that are in place at the moment in Newcastle for next year and continue to go forward. 
Rick, you mentioned the old boys day up there. It's always been a pretty successful afternoon for the Newcastle Knights. Uh, that will be good for the Newcastle players to have the guys who started it you know, 20, 30 years ago just, just around. The faces, some, some inspiration. Uh, I guess they'll feel a responsibility to do well. Yeah, I think um, as far as our old boys are concerned, they're one of the, the strongest in the NRL. And this particular game, the last home game of the season, has built up a, a really tremendous um, atmosphere and a, a tremendous tradition ever, ever, um, from the start of the Knights. There's no doubt about it. You know, it's going to be a massive game, plenty of support from the right sort of people. And um, I'm sure all the old boys are going to be proud by the time we finish today. Just a final question, Rick. I, now, this talk of, of how dangerous... Frank Pritchard can be Michael Jennings. To me, it's quite ironic that I think the main stumbling block for Newcastle is going to be one of the former Knights in, in Luke Walsh. Uh, does it help the fact that he's been there and you know his game and, and you know what he's like as an individual coming up against him this afternoon? Yeah, look, I think while she's proved himself to be a first grader, which is terrific for him, um, you know, he's pretty popular amongst the boys here, but he's got a job to do and we've got a job to do today. I think we know his game fairly well and, um, you know, there's, there's no doubt that he'll, he'll try and put his own stamp on Penrith's performance and we've got to do our best to um, nullify how much impact he has on the game. Well, mate, thank you very much for joining us this morning. It is a huge afternoon for you. The honeymoon finished a little bit for you last week. You know what it's like to lose as a first-grade coach. But good luck this afternoon in, in guiding the Newcastle Knights into a top-eight spot. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rick. Cheers, mate. And Centibet prices, they're actually very firm favourites. $1.51 up against the Penrith Panthers. You will see the match on Channel 9 at 4 o'clock from the home ground of the Newcastle Knights. And it will be a full house up there. As I say, Centibet prices, $1.51. Penrith, $2.60. And in our other game, the Roosters, $2.55. Are outsiders against North Queensland, $1.53. Some good value there if you fancy the Roosters. Um, They've won 9 from 11, Newcastle at home. But can I just ask you, 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 you asked him how much had changed uh, as a first grade coach. Mm. I, I found, as you might have found through the years, support staff kind of find it much easier to be friends with players. Mm. Going in as a head coach, does that relationship have to change? Or, or, or do you think you know, it's something that Rick's got to be careful of? Or has he addressed that you can't have the same kind of relationship as an assistant? Yeah, I think it certainly changes. It's probably a bit harder and something that he's going to have to work hard on. So um, I, I, think, I guess I've seen that with Kevin Moore, who's been assistant coach for a long yeah, time, and then, do, yeah. and then straight into the head coach job, and I think he's handled it well. So uh, I think it does count in their favour that they've had that friendship as well, but uh, I certainly think things change when you become head coach. OK, well, big afternoon up in Newcastle. We'll be heading up there shortly. You'll see it at 4 o'clock. We'll break now and be back with more on the Sunday Footy Show. Luke Patton made his debut on the very same day that Craig Fitzgibbon made his debut back in 1998. Now, Luke, I'll bring you in here. Do you remember this? Round three, it was Illawarra versus Newcastle. You were but a teenager. And Joey played. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what do you remember, Luke? I was scared. I remember that. <laughs> uh, Full-strength Newcastle side, and I was, um, yeah, pretty nervous before the game. I think we ended up getting hammered, but... Um, it's great memories playing with Fitzy back at the Steels and I uh, really hope he goes out the right way today. Well, let's wind the clock back and I'll pass it on to Andrew Johns if you can talk yeah, us through this overlay. Come on! What, what, what happened, this, what what happened, happened? this day? Oh, this I bad. heard you requested oh. this. Yeah, torpedo bomb swirling around, awesome. impossible to catch. Uh, just generally, you need a feed there, mate. It's <laughs> 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 60 kilos. <laughs> Touched a weight cut as well. Doesn't look any uh, different. Oh, Sharon Gap. Johns, oh. Johns, oh. Johns will score. Oh. Goes all the way under the post. 17 or 18, what were you, Luke? 18. 18. 18, yeah. They just turned 18. It's been an amazing career since. Uh, Jared Mullen this afternoon is going to be an important cog for Newcastle. And he's playing against a lot of his old teammates. In particular, Luke Walsh, who's a good mate of him. Our bureau chief in the northern regions of Around the Grounds, Jimmy Callan, and caught up with him. Yeah, old Pad Ty and, uh, you know, Luke Walsh and uh, Adam Woolnow, old ex-players, you know, they're all good mates of mine and uh, a few players here, so it's going to be a good, tough match, but uh, I'm sure there'll be a bit of sledging out there. <laughs> On Walsh, I mean, you are great, mate. So you never have thought this scenario possible, uh, you know, only a matter of months ago, but here you are. Yeah, he's a great mate of mine and, uh, you know, I never thought I'd be playing against him. You know, last time we played against each other was under 10, so, um, and played a lot of junior footy together after that. So, you know, it'll be good, um, good going up against him. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a few sledges thrown out there, but, uh, you know, he's playing great footy at Penrith there, so, you know, good luck to him on the weekend.
Playing some pretty good footy himself, isn't he, Jared Mullen, this afternoon at Energy Australia. Penrith, Newcastle boys, final say, who, who makes up the eight? Penrith. Penrith make it, so Parramatta. Boil over. Parramatta finish seventh. Seventh. I'm with you. Oh, hold yes. on. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> and you, MG? Happy Father's Day. Go Panthers. Panthers. Well, I think the Knights get the cash this afternoon. Welcome to Sport, everyone. The Newcastle Knights have grabbed eighth spot on the NRL ladder to book a place in the finals following a big win over the Penrith Panthers this afternoon. The Knights ran on to Energy Australia Stadium in front of 200 former Newcastle players and a capacity crowd. And the home team never looked like dropping out of the finals race. Donald gets it back on the inside. Here comes a try for the home team. And Kurt Gidley scores a beauty. The Knights winning 35 points to nil to end the Panthers' season. Newcastle has grabbed the last spot available in the NRL finals with a one-sided win against Penrith today. In the other game, the Roosters finished with the wooden spoon after losing to the Cowboys, while the Knights won 35 nil. It was all or nothing for these two teams. The loser confined to next year's competition. The winner given hope for at least another week. Gets it back on the inside. Here comes a try for the home team. Houston's pass to Mullen gave the Knights more breathing space. And when Gidley scored his second, the Panthers' season looked over in a blink. It didn't look good for the Knights when De Goyce was carried off, while veteran Mad Dog McDougall showed all young wingers the way to the line. Still make it, no double movement. We certainly don't want to make the semis and, and be out the following week. We want to be there and, um, and do our best. Time for sport now with Joanna Griggs in the last place in the NRL finals decided. Yes, Ian, the Knights beat the Panthers, so the Dragons-Eels rematch is on. All the league is next. The Knights have claimed the final spot in the NRL finals by destroying a disappointing Panthers side in Newcastle. Craig Fitzgibbon finished his career at the Roosters with a wooden spoon after a terrible collapse against the Cowboys, while the Knights hammered Penrith. With the Old boys day at Newcastle and they would have been proud as the Knights turned back the clock and Penrith barely turned up. And Kurt Gidley scores a beauty. Jared Mullins strolled through some terrible defence for their second. Juro send them to the break up 13-0 with a field goal and there was no relief in sight for Matt Elliott as the Knights piled on four more to take the final spot in the eight. And Mad Dog McDougall scores for the Knights. Oh. Shattered. Let's go to a man that will make some sense uh, after the match. Knights coach Rick Stone was thrilled with his team's defensive effort. You know, really pleased with the performance, particularly the nil scoreline, obviously. That, that's impressive at this time of year. And I thought the way we controlled the game in the back half of the game, or the back half of the second half, was, was pleasing because, you know, it was good practice for what we need to do in coming weeks. Newcastle are a very well disciplined defensive, defensive line, and you need to grind them down. And when you do that, you'll get opportunities. We didn't do it. On the field, this year has been one of Rugby League's best ever. And with the final eight now decided, the playoff series is shaping as a thriller. Well, the captains got together today. They're all confident theirs can be the last team standing. Knights captain Kurt Gidley made the most stylish arrival. Forget the F3 and traffic delays. Gidley made it to Sydney with plenty of time to spare. A seaplane from Newcastle, it's a pretty good trip. I might uh, do that a few more times. Newcastle's faithful were out in force ahead of Saturday night's final against the Bulldogs in Sydney. <laughs> Watching teammates train, hooker Isaac de Goyce will have a fitness test on his injured knee either tomorrow or Saturday morning. The Knights given special permission by the NRL to wear their original playing strip. Yeah, I think it's it's a great idea and I think every time we've sort of played in this series we've we've played really well so um, hopefully that can keep going and yeah, it'd be nice to uh, to have it as a permanent sort of strip. I think everyone sort of really likes it. Andrew McKinley, nine years. To win, to make the semis, you did that, 35 nil. Um, how's the feeling in the camp? Yeah, great. I mean, um, it's been you know, a work in progress the last couple of years and um, yeah, I'm really proud of everyone's efforts. The Bulldogs were only a win away from minor premiership glory, whereas the Knights have been the dark horse all year. Can the Doggies win without Noddy? Or will the Knights send the Dogs back to Belmore with their tails between their legs? Knights are capable of that sort of football. They play the Bulldogs this week. 
Um, you played against the Knights uh, a couple of weeks ago. You were up there. I think you led them 20 to 8 or 20 to 6 at half time. Had them shot to bits. Second half, all one-way traffic. Once they get on a roll, they're hard to contain. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, Mullen and, and Gids really, uh, you know, attack you around the ruck. And then McDougal and then they've got Sow on the other side that are, uh, you know, certainly exposure on the edges. So once they get on a roll, they're very hard to stop. As we saw in the Penrith game last Sunday up there at uh, Energy Australia Stadium, they can score from anywhere on the field too. This is not a team that you can relax and say, OK, they're working out of trouble, so they're just going to hit the ball up. Have a look at some of these try against the Panthers last week. This one's coming from the right edge, you know, which is where you like to attack Benji, back to the middle of the field, and that's you, Benji Marshall, slicing through that hole against the Bulldogs. It's, it's virtually the same sort of play. From their own end of the field, down short sides. Kurt Gidley is very instrumental in this. He backs up Sow to score on the inside. So... The Knights do have the game to trouble the Bulldogs, given what we saw from the Tigers the other night. Well, well I think so. Kurt Gidley out of dummy half will trouble the forwards around the ruck, and as soon as they throw a shift play in, that, that right edge of the Bulldogs really, really gets exposed. And without Kamali there inside Idris, I think it's just going to be uh, hard for them to stop them out wide. JT, one of the things I said about Newcastle on the weekend, they, they appear to me to be one of the more clinical teams in the competition. When they go for a play or ball movement, it, it seems that everyone is really precise about what they do. Is that hard to contain? Yeah, it is because they are, you know, they have players in motion, uh, players hitting the right holes, players out the back, so uh, you certainly have to communicate in defence to try and stop it. Right, now, let's have a look at the Bulldogs taking on the Knights. It's uh, the game two you'll see on Saturday night at 8.30pm after the Gold Coast Titans take on the Broncos and the Bulldogs raging odds on favourites. Very successful at ANZ Stadium. Uh, but the Knights on the back of that 35-0, they were very good against Penrith. Very good. I and I don't see the Newcastle Knights doing much different to what the Tigers did against the Bulldogs last week. I mean, the onus, the O-U-N-S, is really on the Bulldogs to get it right, to, to not make the mistakes you made last week, Michael. It was a disastrous performance, really. Well, it's going to have to be on, isn't it? Because if you, I don't yeah, know if you caught is. Newcastle last week, but that was a terrific win. Yeah, no, 35 nil 35-0 against Penrith, who were a contender for the last spot. Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, you know, their fans travel well. I'm sure they'll all get down to Danes at Stadium and get right behind them. And, yeah, I, I agree with Vossi. We're going to have to be, you know, right on um, to ensure that we win on Saturday night. And I think that just comes down to our attitude and, and the intensity that we take into the game. There's a couple of stats that the Knights, great credit to them. They're the only side in the competition I think you'll find that's beaten all of the top four teams this year. Yeah. But away from home, the last uh, part of the season, they've really hit a bit of a hurdle, though. They, they, their form at home is fantastic. But on the road, in fact, they've lost their last six away from home now. Well, yeah. I don't know if that'll carry into finals footy, but it's not the sort of record you want to have going into the final eight. No, it doesn't, but does that coincide with uh, Brian Smith signing with the Roosters? Because, you know, speaking to Kirk Gilly the other night, and you know, that's disappointing when a coach comes out and was doing what he was doing, because I think I said it during the year, the Knights have been one of the toughest sides to play along with the Dogs yeah. because they play it tight, they play it wide. Um, even the Mad Dog, I hate to say it, you're playing pretty good football, Mad Dog. Um, That's a great try, score, yeah, wasn't it? He's turned the clock he's back. He's wound the clock years, back. Yeah. I don't know what he's been doing, I suppose. He's only played 10 games this year, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the Mad Dog, uh, he was oh, our oh, man in camp with Newcastle this week as well. Hi, I'm Adam McDougall from the Newcastle Knights. And Mad Dog McDougall scores for the Knights. We've just finished our last training session before the huge semi-final clash against the Bulldogs. Why don't you come with me inside the sheds and meet all the players and get all the goss. Let's go. Obviously first time in the NRL finals. Uh, what's it mean to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play, you know what I mean? I, I don't really know what to expect, but it's going to be good. Um, from, from what I heard, it's just up the intensity, and, and that's the sort of footy that, that I'm going to enjoy. Obviously, Jared, your dad played for Canterbury, and um, second semi finals obviously played here with the Knights in 06. Um, big occasion for you and your family? Yeah, it is. Uh, obviously, dad played some games here at Canterbury, and uh, he's got a lot of fond mem memories back there, but um, you know, looking to beat his old team, I suppose, on the weekend. First time in the semi finals, you're looking forward to it? I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You're not playing? <laughs> What do you mean you're not playing? What happened? Uh, it's, it's got to lose weight. Got to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last week you come off of a little bit of a, a niggling injury. How's that going this week? Yeah, not too bad, mate. At the moment, still 50-50, um, but we'll see how we go Friday. Yeah. It means a lot to the people of Newcastle. What did it mean to you on the weekend, finally um, getting back in the finals? Oh, I mean, it's, it's what every player plays for, is to, is to play finals and, and hopefully get that... That big one at the end of it, but um, to see everyone's happy faces around the around the ground uh, on the weekend, it was uh, it was good. But um, 
match. He's, uh, it all starts uh, all starts from now. Do you think the soup's had a lot to do with our turnaround? You have never eaten anything after training, ever. Well, can I just say that Pete used to have a lovely dog and I still maintain that I think it's in there sometimes. <laughs> Isaac de Goyce is, is maybe in doubt this week, so there may be an opportunity there for you. Yeah, maybe. Like, we're waiting to see how Isaac pulls up. But, um, you know, if he's no good, then I'm ready. I've been training and I'm ready to put my best foot forward and help the boys get a win anywhere I can. What's your uh, favourite drink? Coke. Coke. Why is that, mate? <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thanks again, Georgie, and hopefully the Lebanese supporters get out there on the weekend and don't support one Lebanese legend of the game and hasn't. They support you as well, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. <laughs> thanks, uh, Adam. Now, it's good to see the boys actually enjoyed that. I mean, the, the players were interviewed enjoyed it and Dukes enjoyed it. Yeah. Going yeah. good, Dukes. That's pretty You've relaxed. you got a great rivalry with Dukes, haven't you? Yeah. It probably comes back to when I was, like, the best winner in the game for about seven years, so... <laughs> <laughs> you Boys, are yeah. the best. I'm still here, buddy. Yeah. You are yeah. the best. <laughs> <laughs> and Bulldogs beware. The Knights are on their way. As they left for Sydney, the underdogs were given a rousing send-off and a little bit of lippy from their beloved fans. Thank you, darling. No worries at all. There you go. Thanks very much. Thank you. But there'll be no love for those Bulldogs trying to fill Brett Kamali's boots. Try and pressure their halves as well. They're only sort of young halves as well, so we'll put as much pressure on them as we can. A convoy of 20 buses packed full of Newcastle fans will make the trip south tomorrow. Adam Hawes, 10 News. And in Sydney, Matt Sulo previews the Bulldogs Newcastle matchup. There's plenty of interest out at ANZ Stadium tonight with Newcastle looking to keep their season alive against the Bulldogs. Sports Tonight's Matt Sulo has us covered in Sydney. Matt, what do you reckon? Can the Knights get up here? Uh, good question, Rob. Well, the loss of Bulldogs halfback Brett Kamali certainly has Knights fans believing they can. But you just need to look back to last week's loss to the Dogs, where the Dogs went down to the Tigers to see they really did look lost without Noddy guiding them around the park. Now, in, the, uh, in saying that, the Dogs have won 11 of their last 12 games here at ANZ Stadium. Now, Daniel Holdsworth will be wearing the number seven this week, and Kamali has full faith that the 25-year-old can get their side across the line. He'll be excited to play semi-finals. You know, he gets a chance to start. You know, he's come off the bench a few times this year. So, you know, if we play well, then, then DJ will play well. You know, if we play bad, then everyone's going to play bad. So, I, mean, I think he'll do a great job. Now, now the Knights were giving a rousing send-off as they left for Sydney yesterday. So they should have plenty of support here at the ground. Now the first of 20 buses has already started arriving full of fans. But Steve Simpson says the players won't be feeling any nerves. I've said to a few of the boys through the week, I said it's just, well they've been playing since they've been six and seven year old. I said nothing changes too much. I said the intensity is probably a little bit higher. And, um, and yeah, in saying that it's a great crowd and a great occasion. So all good. So, Rob, if the Bulldogs win, they get next week off and the Knights are out. If the Knights win, then they both play next week. OK, have a great night out there. We'll see you soon. A big doubleheader of finals footy tonight. We're just minutes away from kickoff in the Queensland derby between the Titans and the Broncos. Then it's off to ANZ Stadium where the Bulldogs take on the Knights. Nine commentator Phil Gould is on the sideline at Homebush. Gus, your thoughts on these two matches? Tim, I've been so excited all day about this night of rugby league on Channel 9. First up, as you say, the Gold Coast Titans play host to the Brisbane Broncos. Now, if you're a Manly fan, you desperately need the Gold Coast to win that game. Otherwise, if Brisbane win, it increases the likelihood that the Manly side may not get another chance in this final series. Broncos are the most experienced team up against the Titans, the most inexperienced team. That'll be a battle royal. We come back to ANZ Stadium at 8.30 where the Bulldogs, the number two team, take on the Newcastle Knights number seven. The Knights know if they lose, they're gone. They're going to be desperate. The Bulldogs poor last week against the Tigers. They're beaten by 30-odd points. They'll want to bounce back to form, knowing that if they win tonight, they get a fortnight broke break and go into round three of the finals and that'll give them time for Brett Kamali to get over his injury and maybe get back for those vital clashes. Newcastle Knights play a similar sort of football to the Tigers so they're really going to test the Bulldogs tonight. The Bulldogs are up against it. It'll be a cracker of the match. Gold Coast Brisbane, Bulldogs Knights, don't miss it.
Thanks, Phil. One of the most exciting nights of the rugby league year for sure. And thousands of Newcastle fans have travelled down the F3 to watch their Knights take on the Bulldogs at ANZ Stadium in tonight's other clash. Yeah, Simi, you must be proud of the boys' courageous effort. Yeah, they did, mate. They, uh, yeah, put their hand up. Felt a bit sorry for Goyes. He obviously put his hand up and wanted to play and, and was busting his backside for the team. And it didn't work out for him tonight. But um, yeah, him in particular, and obviously Gids late there in the game as well. But um, this wasn't our night, mate. Yeah, awfully proud. It's, um, it's been a, a bit of a stepping stone for the last few years, but um, this year to make the semis was a, was a good effort after the last month we've put in so much, but um, it's, yeah, it's also pretty disappointing too. In Sydney, Knights hooker Isaac de Goyes lasted just two tackles. I think the knee's gone. It summed up the match for Newcastle. They were never in the contest against the Dogs. Canterbury proving they can do it without Kamali, winning by 14 and earning the week off. Jonathan Williams, 10 News. Meantime, the Bulldogs will enjoy a weekend off after ending Newcastle's season last night. The Titans claim the referees cost them victory against the Broncos, while the Dogs are just one win away from the grand final. It quickly became clear this could be a dark night for Newcastle. Got a problem for De Goyce already. I think the knee's gone. De Goyce done, a knee injury he took into the game, flaring up on the second tackle. The hooker anything but happy to leave his team a man down. It's a gamble that we took and one obviously didn't pay off. That hurts early in the game. I was hoping they would play him, to be honest. <laughs> so, um... And that's why it turned out. With Matt Hilda taking up the slack, the Knights grabbed an early lead. Junior Sale has scored! But it didn't last long as the Dogs' backline clicked into gear. Josh Murray scores for the Dogs! Young giant Jamal Idris was causing all sorts of trouble, throw in a little bit of El Magic, and Patton had a saloon passage to the line. The elder statesmen have combined with the apprentice. I don't know, bro. I just pumped, eh? It's pretty good. It was fun out there, I tell you that much. The Bulldogs bulldozing their way to a week off. The Knights have a whole lot more than that. Gidge with the dust settled a little bit now, um, scraped into the, the, the playoffs. How do you look back on this season that yeah. Newcastle have, have Yeah, I guess we wanted to improve on last year, and that was that coming into the last game last year where we, we missed out on the eight. Um, we improved, I guess, but... Uh, uh, we're beaten in the first first week against the Dogs, but um, yeah, two injuries in that game uh, really hurt us with Zeb Taylor and uh, and Isaac De Goyce. Yeah. In all in all seriousness, both for you, Trent and Kurt, looking at what Parramatta have achieved, uh, you'd, you'd be talking with your teammates back, you know, two and a half months ago. You couldn't have possibly seen them as a as a grand final contender, could you? Yeah, I don't know. That momentum thing and the confidence is, is amazing when you've got it behind you and, and the support that that you get from your fans and, and the communities. Is, um, is really hard to stop. But it's great to, uh, you know, having it behind you. Now, who wins on Sunday? Who do you like, Gids? you played yeah. these sides? You... Man, I think both both teams are, are well coached. I know I've been coached by Belly and, and my brother was coached by um, Danny Leonis and um, at St Helens the last two years. And they're both great coaches, but, you know, I think Melbourne's experience in, in past grand finals um, may have them there. I don't know. OK, before we go, Trent, is, is Matt back in the country yet? Um, no, they, they play this week as well, uh, okay. St Helens, so hopefully they're in a the grand final the following week. OK. <laughs> Boys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Rick Stone, just a quick comment, He's looking uh, forward to Mate, playing under him, yeah, off-season with him. It's been great to have him there uh, for the back end of the year. Yeah. He's a really good fella. He's got a good relationship with the players and, and I think he'll go well as a, as a first-rate yeah, coach. I think he'll coach. have a great year next and year. Baz, good luck when, the, I think, 24 players or so named on Sunday for the yeah. touring squad. Uh, what price you, you give yourself here? Is chance or not? Well, Johnny yeah. Sutton's yeah. out, so that's, okay. sure. that's an opening. Sweet. Yeah. Pretty long. All right, boys. Thanks no. very much. Please thank the boys for it. Plus the Knights' reaction to the drugs arrest involving star forward Danny Wicks. The Newcastle Knights insist their drug policy is one of the strongest in sport. That's despite prop Danny Wicks being charged with possessing and supplying illicit drugs. Newcastle CEO Steve Burriston faced the media at lunchtime, hours after prop Danny Wicks was arrested for drug supply and possession. What went through your mind when you got the call? I, I guess I can't say it on, uh, on camera. Clearly rattle, he remained defiant. We don't believe 
that there, there is any involvement from any other player, nor do we believe that we have a drug culture in, in our club. Despite today's charges, Newcastle were backing their current drugs policy as the strongest in the NRL. And while showing sympathy for the player's family, the Newcastle CEO's stance remained clear. A professional footballer, average Joe Blow, um, you know, it, it's just something that I won't condone. Wicks arrest capping off a terrible year off field for Rugby League and coming just seven days after NRL CEO David Gallup made an optimistic wish for 2010. We'd like to have less off field incidents than we had in 2009. Wicks joined the Knights in 2008, his robust build and on-field flair quickly making him one of the club's most popular players, while his heavy involvement in community service has made the revelations even more shocking. Understand that this is, we are a cross-section of society and unfortunately society every now and then has people who fall on the wrong side of the tracks. Wicks received bail this afternoon, but the club will not consider welcoming him back till the matter is resolved in court this February. Adam Thompson, 10 News. Rugby league shock, a young Newcastle night star charged with being a drug supplier. This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. It's been a terrible year for off-field dramas in rugby league and it's ending the same way. The latest crisis involves Newcastle Knights forward Danny Wicks, who's been arrested and accused of being a member of a major drug supply syndicate. A new low for a club that has attracted more than its share of controversy. Young Knights forward Danny Wicks arrested this morning, charged for supplying drugs, cocaine, speed and ecstasy. Eight charges in all, six counts of supplying and two of possession. We have stood um, Danny down effective immediately and indefinitely. The 24-year-old was one of four people arrested in an alleged network that extended north to Grafton. That's where his younger brother Brett and another woman were taken into custody. Police searched his car, even looking for evidence in a baby's car seat. We believe we have dismantled a uh, significant drug distribution network. The prosecutor argued against Wicks being given bail. She said he was at the top of the network and had supplied hundreds of ecstasy pills. He's indicated that um, he'll defend the charges and um, we've indicated uh, that's the case to the court. Wicks has attracted a cult following among Knights fans, largely due to this blockbusting try in 2008. Is going to score the best try of his career. If the charges are proven, it'll be a body blow to a club still haunted by the confession of Andrew Johns, who admitted taking drugs over a long period of time. You know, I'm fairly confident that there is nobody taking drugs in our organisation. On the night's website, Wicks declared the best advice he ever received everyone makes mistakes, the smarter people learn from them. So, Mark, has Danny Wicks been released on bail? Well, Peter, he was certainly granted bail uh, mid-afternoon, but it seems he's had a problem coming up with the $30,000 surety required. In fact, he's still inside the police and court complex here in Newcastle, but his lawyer is confident he will be released either tonight or tomorrow morning. Either way, uh, any chance of uh, him playing next year is remote as he defends these charges. Peter, back to you. Mark Burrows from Newcastle, thank you. A Newcastle Knights footballer stood down charged with supplying drugs. The Newcastle Knights Rugby League Club is embroiled in a fresh drug scandal with star player Danny Wicks charged over a distribution ring. Reporter Lee Jelasek is at Knights headquarters this evening. Lee, how's the club handling this case? Mark, he's one of four charged over a syndicate allegedly supplying speed, ecstasy and cocaine. Now, he's been suspended by the club indefinitely. Knights bosses are extremely disappointed with the damage done to the club's reputation, which they've worked extremely hard to rebuild since the Andrew Johns ecstasy scandal. He's used to public attention, but police say Danny Wicks had no idea he'd been under surveillance for months. This has been a, uh, a very... Um detailed and extensive operation. He's now facing eight drugs charges. Phone taps allegedly link Wicks to a network dealing cocaine, methamphetamine and ecstasy. These offenders are close to the top of the network. He's going to fight the charges? Yeah, at this stage he is. Yep. 
which I think is one reason he um, was given by. Today, Newcastle Knights players were told their teammate had been stood down indefinitely. Fortunately, we keep making mistakes off the field. And I'm not going to throw stones because I've been one of those players in rugby union and rugby league that's made my fair share of mistakes. Players were also briefed about the heavy police surveillance and warned to come forward if they knew more. We've got to play by the rules, otherwise it's a big price to be paid. Two years ago, the Knights were rocked by another drug scandal when Andrew Johns admitted frequent ecstasy abuse. Incredible highs I got on. Um, but you know, invariably after the highs, I'd crash to a... Lows where I never, wouldn't leave the house for four days. The club denies it has a cocaine culture. Society does it every day, every week, um, and unfortunately some of our people form part of that society. Among those also arrested today, Wick's brother, Brett, and sister-in-law, Tristan Davenport, in Grafton. Danny Wicks is banned from contacting them. Now, Wicks was granted bail late this afternoon, but is having some problems raising the $30,000 that's needed. So he'll spend tonight behind bars, but his legal team is hoping to get him out tomorrow. Mark. OK, Lee, thank you. Plus, moving on, the Knights spreading Christmas cheer despite their off-field dramas. As you may have seen earlier, the Knights are doing their best to put aside the shock Danny Wicks drug arrest. While the forward was being bailed today from Newcastle Court, the Knights were spreading Christmas cheer at a local children's ward. So we can just look upon it as we've lost a player through injury and all that sort of stuff. Um, the club lost myself last year through injury, Dan Tollis, so there's nothing the club can't handle in that respect. Veteran forward Steve Simpson says while it's a big shock, the players will pull together. Stood down Newcastle Knights player Danny Wicks has been released from custody after posting $30,000 bail. He spent the night behind bars following his arrest on six drug dealing charges. His teammates, who were on a Christmas visit to a Newcastle hospital this morning, have all expressed shock at his arrest. While in Wicks's hometown of Grafton, the feeling was one of disappointment. People look up to him and everything, and it's just, it's just not cool. Wicks will be back in court in February. Troubled night star Danny Wicks is back at home tonight after his father posted $30,000 bail on drugs charges. Teammates say they're shocked by his arrest as the club scrambles to rebuild its already tarnished image. Back at home but far from happy. After 30 hours in police custody, Danny Wicks was finally freed on bail. Since his arrest, he's been linked to a major drug dealing network, accused of supplying teammates and suspended indefinitely by his club. Today, the Knights swap suspension talk for celebration. <laughs> a visit to Newcastle's John Hunter Hospital provided some cheer. Santa gave you an early Christmas present. You've been a good girl. But the case against Wicks wasn't far from their minds. It's obviously no one wants to have that happen yeah, to their club and um, it comes to a shock to, to everyone in the team. The NRL remained silent on its latest scandal. The Andrew Johns ecstasy confession rocked the Knights in 2007. Now they're rebuilding their stadium and reputation. In a cruel twist of irony, yesterday the Knights were hoping to unveil Coke as a major sponsor. Today, club chiefs are in Adelaide meeting other potential supporters. The timing for this scandal couldn't be worse. Yeah, we're bonding together tight and, um, and yeah, obviously getting on with our work. The shockwaves are also felt in Danny Wick's hometown of Grafton, where his brother Brett and sister-in-law were also charged. Good kid, a uh, bit of a role model for all the young juniors. Footballers are not role models anymore. <laughs> Lee Jelasek, Seven News. Rugby league and with the Danny Wicks drug bust hanging over the club, Newcastle returned to training today and so did the Knights' internal drug testers. We're tested first day back at training and um, you know, we're all happy to be tested. In an interesting analogy, coach Rick Stone hopes the drama will unite the team like rape allegations united the Bulldogs. That little bit of adversity probably galvanised the dogs at that point in time. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that our players have got a little bit about a little bit of that about him at, at this particular stage.